I barely made it to two shots, I barely tasted Red cups, I keep passing, rolling peaks and valleys Better focus, concentrating to too much, I'm levitating Open up the gates, I feel close enough to heaven To go, to stay, to leave, to pray Cast out in the rain, guess they didn't like my confession It's no mistake, I know it's just a pair Street. 
play with me, they put your brains in them. I grew up around way flippers. Drug addicts, alcoholics, couple grave diggers. Fast forward and a lot of shit changed. If you see me in the party with you, I got paid. A lot of these in the waiting. Brody sold the bag and lit his chain up, he a gang. Free all of my doing time, y'all on the waiting. Take a duffel bag up to the jeweler, I can't play with them. Bust it all down. Flying only time, we do planes. Everywhere the grizzly gang go, they got them things with them. Beat the streets, but I lost a couple main. Speaking of the streets, play with me, they put your bust it all down. Flying only time, we do planes. Everywhere the grizzly gang go, they got them things with them. Beat the streets, but I lost a couple main. Speaking of the streets, play with me, they put your brains. Hang with niggas, cause they be on too much lame. Through a circle on my chopper, staying dangerous. That's a drum if you don't understand my language. Flashing that little bag, boy, I spend it on maintenance. Circle the block before I pull up in the driveway. Nobody know the crib, being cautious, just my mind staying cautious. Don't come trying to play with us and throw your life away. Realist, by the way, get the money right away. I don't run with 50 n****s, I be dolo, nigga. Lamborghini, Benz, Bentley, how you want it? If you broke, but you can move it, I throw You that bag up, that blender, we gon' throw you in it. Bust it all down. Flying only time, we do planes. Everywhere the grizzly gang go, they got them things with them. Beat the streets, but I lost a couple main. Speaking of the streets, play with me, they put your bus it all down. Flying only time, we do planes. Everywhere the grizzly gang go, they got them things with them. Beat the streets, but I lost a couple main. Speaking of the streets, play with me, they put your brains in them.
Spartan underscore Dugan tipped $3.33, based. Reloading my mind, is it you, is it me? I'm ready to find whatever you hear.
order of business guys um I am there's a problem all right the problem is that I can't eat I ordered food the food's on the way I'm gonna be struggling eating that food because of this it's a it's it's a it's a disaster I take a bite of a fucking sandwich and my, you know, I swallow my beard hair and I, it gets all dirty and shit. I gotta go to the sink and clean it and shit, man. It's a fucking mess. I don't know how anyone does this. In any case, tomorrow, I'm gonna be going to clean it up. Thank you, Anonymous. Appreciate the tip, man. Anonymous tipped $5. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go get it trimmed. Now, I'm gonna get it trimmed short, you know? But with that being said, tomorrow, there is not gonna be a stream. Tomorrow, no stream. No stream tomorrow because I'm gonna. I have to go visit my family, guys. I haven't seen them in like. I haven't seen them since I got back from Austin, so it's been weeks. I haven't visited family in weeks. You know, I gotta go do that. Um, so I'm just gonna take one day off Saturday. You know, Saturdays aren't even that big anyway, right? Uh, yeah, my room is a mess. My life is a mess right now. Whatever. I'm getting it. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting back on track slowly but surely. I'm getting back on track. Um, I keep getting invited. So Dylan Burns is the producer. DDM is it. Pause. You should go on Mythic Politics. You know what? Who is Mythic Politics? Does anyone know who that is? Is that a Destiny Orbiter? Because 
the fact that Dylan Burns producer is the one asking me, I just feel like I shouldn't give these people any clout, you know? Oh, he hates Destiny. He hates Destiny. Okay. Thank you, Raven. Well, if he don't, if not a Dylan Orbiter. All right. It's a Vosh. Well, anyway, here's what I'm kind of worried about. So the debate topic is actually about bio labs. Um, if the debate topic is about bio labs, am I even allowed to debate about it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, am I even allowed to talk about it? And or will I be accused of um, misinformation? You know, I don't even know. If, I think they're, they might. I'm, I'm paranoid. Are people trying to bait me to get me deplatformed? You know, there's a lot of weird Destiny people that like. They just like. They contact me sometimes and they DM me and shit. And it's like, yeah, these are clearly fucking tied to. Yeah, you know. So let me tell you guys something, you know, let me tell you guys something, I, uh, you gotta understand, 95% of Twitter is bots, I'm not even kidding, I'm not even kidding that it's bots, 95, it's like 90% of it's bots, you know, it's like 95% bots, botted, so you gotta understand, this is an internet of bots, this is a botted internet. Okay, we are the only humans, you know, we're probably the only humans. Like, the internet is like this weird place where it's all bots and we're an oasis of humans. Okay, we're, we're the oasis of humans. You know, do you really think these big streamers, that's, that's huge, they're all humans in that chat? I don't know. You know, I know a way of testing bots. Like, for example, I could test the bot. Ready? This is what will test the bot in the chat. Also, if we have time today, there's a documentary about how a bot controls the U.S. economy that uh, one of my mods shared to me. And that's just like, that'll just be like some extra. We're not going to do GTRP today, you know. We'll save that for another time. If we have time, we'll do that. But uh, it's actually kind of cool, you know. But anyway, I'm gonna test if you guys are bots or not. Ready? So bots. What is two plus two? Simple question. <laughs> and there you go. This is why we're the only human community. You see, this is human. These are humans, right? You wanna know why that's human? Because only humans are capable of devotion. A bot will never lie out of devotion and loyalty. You guys will lie out of your devotion and loyalty. So that means you're human. human game yeah, we're human. Feels good, huh? Yeah, human. 
Fuck stupid people. Um, I wonder if that we're gonna get to a point where stupid becomes a slur. Because the avant-garde uh, leftist communities already say that stupid is an ableist term. Here we go with Honcho's comment of the day. You have the music taste of a depressed bitch. You know what, Honcho? Tell me why that shouldn't be the final straw for today. Tell me why you should still be in the chat for the rest of the night after you type that. You know, you always just... Yeah, you, it's like the first thing I see from you today is some shit that should just immediately get you timed out for the day. And I don't... At US, why don't you just permaban him? I don't know. I, the reason I don't permaban him is just like... I've seen him here for so long. But he's so fucking cheap, he doesn't even sub. If he subscribed, he would probably be a fucking 8-month sub. The dude hasn't subbed once in the fucking channel. Don't gift him a sub either. Do not gift this guy a fucking sub. Make him pay for one, or make him use his prime. Don't ever fucking gift him shit. Yeah. It's like, you, you go and chat, every day you talk all this Bruh, Huncho walks in here like he owns the place. He walks around the chat like he owns the place. He didn't even sub! This dude watches ads. That's how much you don't want to sub. He just watches ads. And don't sub. I don't want you to sub any. I, I shouldn't have to ask you, you know? No. Just let him, let him have to watch ads. Let him have to watch ads. Should, oh, there's a poll now. Should Hunso get permaban? Alright, anyway. You know, I saw on YouTube that Chud Logic guy, the, the orbiter who lost his star, who's wandering now. Uh. Oh, my food's here. Give me a second. Guys, I got Panera Bread. Yes, yes, I got Panera Bread. Yes, yes, is Panera Soy. Yes, it's soy. But guess what? That chicken sandwich... I'm going I'm to review that chicken sandwich right now on stream for you, but I was seeing that um, Chud, Chud Logic thing, and it's like... He uses Charm Hole for content. He's like... Anonymous. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Someone gave it to fucking Uncle. Anyway, he like titles the video. He's like insane person. Like that's just charm hole. You know charm hole. It's not some random fucking guy. You know, acts like he's it's like charm hole is just this random guy. That's that's like just desperation for content. Honestly, but let me tell you something. When is iftar? When is iftar? Because I, I might have fasted today accidentally. I woke up at like 5 p.m. and took my first bite at like 7. So I must, I might have actually fasted today. When is it top? I might just wait till you guys can eat. What? I know it's tonight. What fucking time, Eastern time, is it? Because I read online it's like 8.15. When is Iftar? It passed. That's what I fucking thought. There are like no Muslims in the chat. Jesus. Alright, so since if dog passed, I can do this.
So I'm gonna ask you guys a question. What is um What is seared chicken? Is it fried? Because it's like so good. It even tastes better than this is like the best chicken sandwich I've ever had. Pan fried? Is it bad? Is it fried? Is it like bad for you or something? It's not bad? It's good for you? It is fried? Well, if it's fried, it's bad for you. Alright. It's very healthy. Okay. So this is... Huh? Alright. This is Panera Bread's chicken sandwich. And let me tell you guys what. Watch Grimes. Is Grimes on Hassan's stream right now? What the fuck? No fucking shot. No shot. Grimes is on Hassan's stream? Really? Why? Why would she do that to me? How dare she? I'm an artist. And the so, fuck? I mean, art art is political, though. Okay, well, like, well, well this will be our warm up while I eat. But I, um, I want to see I this. Say shit. I say a ton of crazy shit, and sometimes that goes bad. But I think it's worth. I don't know. I suppose. Can you speak it. up? All right. Well, you said um. You said you, you, the the famous the famous thing that you said. I don't know if you're. By the way, anything that you're not comfortable talking about, you don't have to. But you're the famous. All right, Hassan, stop. So, guys, this is the chicken sandwich from Panera Bread, and it's better than Chick Fil A. It's better than Popeyes. It's the best one I've ever had. Best one, and it tastes better than fried chicken. That hardcore I, I was just kind of like fucking around okay you can't mention communism ah. on the internet and not expect it to be hardcore everyone has an opinion on communism on the internet well, from oh. republicans uh, that have never heard of what fucking oh god like the democratic party is communist all oh the way my to, god like, hardliner maoist third world is so we're gonna be like you're actually not following the maoist principles like you're a revisionist so i please mention I mean, infrared I just kind of Straightforwardly not thinking. Um, pretty much. Hassan, tell her about I mean, infrared. My vibe is kind of like, like I'm an artist. Me. I think people see me as like a politician. You owe it to me. Like see me as this. Tell her about infrared. Someone who should be responsible. Just do it. Trust me. Which I probably should be more responsible, but um. You don't have to be responsible. I I, I should be. Responsible. I, I am very irresponsible about my my rhetoric on the internet. Don't worry about that. Like guys, don't go in his chat. Holy fuck. I literally saw someone at me in his chat. Don't fucking do that. In the real world, in the real world, like Scientology. I mean, that's li yeah. L. Ron Hubbard was. was you know, like like Jules Verne, whatever. You know, like it's it's like we're not welcome there, guys. Hope you know that. Is to just sort of like throw out ideas into the world, and some of them are probably going to be huge failures, and so some of them might be good. And, you know, I'm not a strat- I made a fucking video defending Grimes while Hassan attacked her. She... If she knew, she would be on my stream. Say crazy stuff, and, uh... Yeah, I guess nice guys finish last. I don't know. I like. I think that's sort of the role of the artist. And I, but I think what has gotten tricky is like normally, like in a in a in a like the regular reality, I would just be some like weird indie person, and like you know, I'd like be saying a bunch of crazy shit. Oh god, this sandwich! Tiny amount of people seeing it, and it would be in a bubble. Um, but due to circumstances of life, uh, my stupid shit has been like grown into, amplified amplified into some mainstream context and then i keep getting burned because i'm like way too crazy and not media trained enough to be oh uh, uh, but was the necklace this sandwich tastes so good randomly 
someone send this to me? I don't know about mm. this crystal shit. Are you you're a crystal mommy? I'm not. You, a little bit. Here. I got some crystals. I got this one. I don't even know what it is, but I don't even this know. This is skull. I, I don't know what any of this shit is. I've been like, that's cool. Uh huh? Remember in LA, in Hollywood, that girl who was selling crystals? And then one of Hassan's like mods knew the girl who sold the crystals and she's actually on Twitch. What is up with Hassan and crystals? They do things with crystals. They're, they're, they do something's going on. They like they 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 trade in crystals. It's a way to uh, mind control. The fuck? Crystals? Safety fairy dust from my you know, friend. Don Ox. Yeah, I do what? want to actually ask. What, Hostinox, you mean? Hostinox? Oh my god. Yeah, Wait, hold on. They're going to fucking, they're going to lose their like shit. We, we oh, Jesus Christ. Like okay. Wait, so I need to, I need to. You have a deep fake? That's, no, I, I have, that's, a, I have an that's editor. That's tight. That's really cool. I have an editor. His name is Austinox. And he basically decided to make uh i mean he, he just did like the ai for of my voice he just did like ai training no this is super sick and I, then I, and kevin now he's like deep fakes my voice kevin just told me me about this on the way here that's like super sick so wait so you have mm. a deep fake of you that like does bad things that's out in the world like <laughs> fucking with you okay it doesn't do bad things but i mean i i just i was like yeah sure do does, do like he does some bad things it's like it's yeah, hell? kind of. You have like a hell. This is fire. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like it's not doing sandwich. it on its own. It's not like out actually an artificial. Uh, like social media science. It's not fashion. AI. It's just it's an editor that is like you know, uh, really, been able to recreate my voice. Can we really not put on some music, like some elevator music, like? <laughs> like have you ever gone on spotify elevator music playlist it's amazing round two do you want i mean we can play round okay, two we're well, having a I feast need to do two things here one i need to fix this camera angle that's like it's annoying me a little bit okay and two i need to fix yeah. your microphone but i don't Why? know where to because the noise gate is really uh the noise gate's a little too high right now you for you a, you need a cloud this is i i think you need a uh i would uh, be friends with grimes this microphone requires but nothing more a, you know what I'm talking about, Kevin? It, yeah, it, yeah, it needs yeah, that. I, it, I would be friends. It, it needs he a cloud. It it's, it's, it's a. It's a. I, I, I have experience. Only friends. And I don't know if you <clears throat> have the. Are you talking about a cloud lifter? Cloud lifter? A very good friend. I already have that. The, the only. I have. Yeah, the only problem currently is that, well, one, you're not like getting all up in that shit. Okay, okay? so I need this closer to me. You need to be getting all up in that shit, okay? That's one. And then two, um,. I need to I need to just like tackle the noise gate because the, the attack is too high. The noise gate's too high currently. Why are you so buff? Is it necessary? What? I don't know. I I oh like. Oh my out. god! I used to be fat. The flirting. You know. The flirting. Work out. Like, oh my you god! Work, you work out like. Grimes, he talked shit about you. I, I defended you, and you go on his stream. I'm not training. I, um. I play basketball. Basketball. Wow. Yeah. Oh, should we play Elden Ring? Yeah, we will. Hold on, but let me let okay, me just fix this real quick. But I wanted to ask about your character. I have a couple. I have two different characters that I, we can play on. I have a PC character and I have a PlayStation Five character. I need. I need to play on um PlayStation. I think. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can still play on the PC with a controller if you want. It, that doesn't oh, change anything. Okay. But as long as the, as long as the. Mm. Oh, Controls are the same, but I I just don't. I'm not a magic. I'm not. I'm not gonna be good. The Panera Bread Sandwich. Is the character? Like no, it's not a magic character. Is oh, so what, what fucking character? good. I have two different. I mean, we can like literally start a new character too. It might be a little boring, but um, I have a I have like a Dex character. We'll just play on the PC because. Okay you know what, Grimes? I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. Okay. I'm not okay with it. Yeah, you forgot to ask me, didn't you? Well, I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it. 
the from soft is this music good are you happy with this level of music or is this not good what enough we... i don't want to turn it up because then it's going to pick up the no by the noise gate and then we're not going to be able to hear no it's not fried it's seared which is so delicious yeah elon musk is like so pissed right now holy fuck i know elon's got an ego and he hates this guy hassan because hassan stands for everything against elon elon's mad right now holy fuck i don't even know who to side with the legalities of the music industry do good god fuck you what the fuck i didn't click no someone sent it in the chat what is that is that you we don't need to talk about this okay we won't then. i don't want to talk about this no that's fine i just no listen there's again fifty thousand people in here people are gonna send shit i'm clicking on links but you know it's fine all right on a twitch stream right like now that you're yeah we could twitch, twi stream, twitch elon can give us money and hassan gives us nothing so let's side with elon honestly he can give us money it's also i have a i have a playstation 4 as well but i mean we don't have to we don't have to do that we can just like play it on one of the, it's fine um yay nadia's coming okay this is gonna be sick okay uh okay i actually i i in a different on a different day i want to like but you know me hassan and elon share a common enemy and that's adam something adam something got famous talking shit about elon hassan hates adam something i hate adam something the three of us should unite against adam something honestly experience of my life i got pitched so many startups it was insane yeah, that's that's what crypto bros do. That's okay, what, that's what they do. But in the end, chat. If you keep psychoanalyzing, sorry to cut you off. If you keep psychoanalyzing about like how uh, Grimes is feeling right now in the most cringe fucking way that you guys do because you don't know how to control what yourselves are they around women. What are they saying? Are they bullying me? No, they're not bullying you. They're bullying. They're they're are they're they're basically backseat uh, quarterbacking. They're armchair quarterbacking the stream going. Grimes is uncomfortable right now. You need to do this. You need to do that. And it's a deeply, deeply annoying fucking thing that chat does every time there's a girl here because they don't know how to interact with women. So then they get very upset when I don't interact with women in the way that they want me to. So then it's like what very they, parasocial. What do they want you to do? Um, They just think that like the conversation is not going well. Oh God. It's like, it's just like, not going well. it's just like, it's just like how I react when I'm around women. Fuck. Oh God. So then they like, you know, or, or yeah. being over. This is so true. This is what you guys did to me when I went on fucking Kiana's stream. And everyone always thinks, oh, you got mad at Kiana. You got mad at Kiana. I didn't get mad at Kiana. She was doing her job. I got mad at you guys. You guys pissed me off. You guys are the ones who tilted me on that stream. Not Kiana. She was doing her job. She has no, like she asked can, for water. We bottled water. We can't support bottled water here. Okay, I will. I water. I promote tap water is the way. Okay, well, I drink hella bottled water. I'm gonna That's let you know. Good. La La tap water is fucking. Pfft. It's fine. It's a it's a modern miracle. Also, you're not an asshole on the internet. I'm a fucking asshole on the internet. But you know, I might be a bigger asshole. I, it's unclear who's the bigger asshole. I don't think you're an asshole on the internet at all. I think I mean. Um, okay, well, at least, okay, if we're not going to talk about the, the, the proposition that you had for the communists, you got to at least tell us what the fuck was going on with the, with the Griffith background. What's up with that? AI is let's go, let's talk about the communism. What's going on here? Uh, I actually wasn't even thinking that. This was like such a non-thought. You like the aesthetics? Is that what it is? Yeah. I, just, I just like how Griffith looks. Damn. Griffith sucks. Like, I can't believe I can't believe you're asshole. supporting everything he's ever done. He just he's just got great style, but he's, he's an asshole. He's ho he's horrible. He just got like really good. Like his like bleach job is incredible. Yeah, he is. Like his style, Gr Griffith's style. If I if I could look like anyone, I would look like Griffith. Griffith. Is that is that what uh, guided your Met Gala outfit? Pretty much. For those of you who don't know. This is what you were rocking at the Met Gala. I mean, it was fire. It was pretty fire. I'll admit, it I, was good. I I do think so. I I I, I do think. I am going to fucking destroy a, this bagel. Get into the 
Yeah. Holy what? shit. There's if this bagel was a person, the they're about to get the worst I'm just so tired. death yeah. of their life. Oh. I'm going to fucking destroy this oh. fucking bagel. Water? Yeah, sure. sure. Um. Uh. What kind of you? Fuck, I made so much crumbs. Give me a sec. No. Oh. You guys would have to like really pack it in if uh, if you want to do that. We could. Okay, radical abundance. Um. Oh no, I'm so. We already have radical abundance, by the way. I mean, we we, we don't. One hundred percent do. We oversupply food. I mean, you know, we we have no. We but, 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 so we have major supply supply chain failure, like. Hassan, destroy! Brandon, destroy it! This is to have radical abundance, but we like, uh, like between bureaucracy, corruption, and whatever else, like we just have a shitty supply chain situation, and that does need to be organized. Yeah, um, actually, really Hassan's is right. Like you know, Hassan's actually right here. Ashing everything off of who can. Brandon's pay for being it rather than need. Uh. I, I really, I really think it's it's a more of a admin, administrative situation. Like there is, there there are enough. Oh man, oh I just don't want to get into fucking political stuff right now. I'm it's not. You can be. You can like say what you mean about shit. It's all. It's chill. Um. It is it is it. I don't know. Okay. Like um. Okay. How do we get here? Why don't we let's circle back to this? Let's circle back to this. Okay, we can we can circle back to it. Um. Oh yeah, you want we went on the Bella shoot. Oh yeah, I mean I don't know if it's a secret, but I guess you know. Wait, are we not allowed to talk? About I don't this? know. I, I don't we, know. We might be NDA'd. Might have NDA'd. I didn't sign shit, or maybe I did, but I just don't know. I don't know. I don't Actually, remember. we shouldn't we shouldn't leak her, we shouldn't leak Bella's. Stuff. I think Miss Give uh, our friend who's also at the, my friend who's also at the Bella shoot leaked it already. Said he was gonna film it. Huh? I'm okay. Just you gotta you gotta remember something. The okay? going to Mars. How do you live like this? This is not an interview. Like we're not having like a like a hot one style interview here. Okay. Yeah. This is just a normal free, free flow conversation. I don't have like things that I want to get to. I don't have any like information that I want to draw out of you. I'm not looking for like a opportunity to you know clip some shit. And I then do. Be like, oh, this is Grimes, so did you know? Lysenko is was correct, and genetics oh, is a myth. Chill. You don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about. I actually do want to. But talk also, you don't want. I, I, you I don't wanna, need I, to be I, like you I, know I, very guarded. I want to come back in a spicy mode. Okay, so like seven mode, years like, from now. No, 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 no. In, <laughs> the in, way that you in like a month, I want to come back in like super spicy mode. But I just had like a crazy. I I've been on set for like three days straight, like sixteen hours a day. Like, what have you been filming? Um, music videos and stuff. Uh huh. So I just got like over socialized and over, uh, the amount of brain energy I've ha had to spend managing like large groups of people over the last few days is has been like overwhelming. So my brain is just not capable of being like super sharp and like. I mean, you're doing fine. It, it, and also, there's no wrong answers. You can literally I, I just actually, explain. I, I would love nothing more to get to get into the spicy stuff, but I want to do that. I think this should be the like, hey, let's hang out, meet, meet each other, mm -hmm. catch a vibe right. situation. And how, then, does, how does abundance have to do with this outfit, though? Because the outfit's fire. Uh, so I wanted to know what was going outfit? on there. Yeah, because you, you went into abundance. I didn't even ask about that. Irish Van Herpen. I actually do think we could have radical abundance. No, but like, what does this outfit have to do with that? Is it about just like this the outfit, Met Gala in general? This outfit has nothing to do with radical abundance. This is a exceptionally well designed. It is garment, sick ga garment by Iris Van Herpen, who is a yes. Um, it's sick. It's good. Yeah. Good. Do you know about her? No. Like a. I don't know anything. Um, kind of like an architect. Her, she worked in architecture and then moved into fashion. Um, and. Did I use the fork uh, I used yesterday? Is, this is a plastic fork I used yesterday and it's just laying out. 
Also, this is that will I get sick? Delta down AR <clears throat> Should I use it? How many? I don't know. No, the heavy. I already put it in my mouth. They confiscated it and wouldn't let me take it in. I mean, yeah, you look you look like a like a dark. All right, I shouldn't use it. Oh, that, that was All right. That's cool. Is it fine? Sephiroth, that's kind of really Is it a strength? Build All right, fine. I want. They didn't give me a fucking four. Uh, well, only in the last few weeks, I've been thinking. You look like a Dex build. I have one that, from that yesterday. Like but that looks like a strength weapon. Yes, a new I've, one. I've always been a Dex build, but lately I've been like working out. No, I, in Grimes, games, Hassan. Nobody <laughs> gives a fuck strength, about yeah, some dumbass good. video game. Yeah. We uh, want to see you debate fun. about you're communism. Like, Don't fucking debate. Get, Hassan, you're good. Oh, Hassan, you talk shit about her. But when she's in person, you're going to talk about Elden Ring? No, that's fake as fuck. Okay. That's, that's my new approach. That's if I was Hassan, that, that, I would be yelling at her on the top of my lungs right now. You're wrong about theory. You're communism. Like, like, casually. I what a pussy. Right. So, like... I wait when like three weeks ago. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, no, no, no. God yeah. damn. You're, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're like, good. I had COVID by the way. <laughs> I still have it, <laughs> but um, I had it too. But, um, uh, uh, the art in the game. Huh? Like, uh, video game art. Okay. My whole life or for the, for the past four years, I've been saying if someone could just make a game that is a mix between Bloodborne and Harvest Moon, that would be my dream. Bloodborne and in, what? In a way, Elden Ring does accomplish this. Mm hmm. Because you can just get your horse and you can just like vibe through pretty lands and like Bloodborne's better. Things, um, Bloodborne's and better. Just run away from anything that wants to fuck you up. The fuck is Harvest Moon? Enjoy the space, and and then only nerds know violent, about this shit. Do that, and it's really nice. I mean, there's actually, a Elden Ring might be like the perfect game for me. It might be my favorite game ever. Um, uh, nah, there's a, there's games like that. I mean, like Skyrim and shit. I feel I don't like I played Skyrim. I can't. Game have you on, never played it? I, I I don't actually have time to game a lot. I'm like I, I'm like extremely busy. Like I like I, I don't you know have what. Of, like this is a gamer gate moment. Free time. Gamer gate moment. Yeah, Fake gamer Grimes. You don't even game like the rest of us. I game for 13 hours a day, and you're faking it. You're pretending to be one of us, and you're not. Now you're good. You should be able to. You're not. You're not a real gamer. And the microphone will pick it up. Let's try it. Why am I? Have I been speaking too quietly? Yes. Sorry. His noise gate is insane. Yeah, I have a, I have a, a pretty, I have a fire noise yeah, gate so that people don't actually. Oh, hear. do I need to just be like? No, no, you're good. Yeah, now. I mean, you, you should be fine now, but you should still like, you know. We should get the music back. Well, Imagine if I was there. I would be content. I would make this entertaining. Yo, I would music. triple the medieval views medieval of this go to easily. Spotify. Are you gonna Are you gonna get fucked if we go to Spotify and just play like? Yes, I also don't even have Spotify. I use my cousin's Spotify. He's in Turkey, so we have different time zones. So I still use his Spotify because I'm like, he's never up while I'm up. What if I put tavern music on my phone? I mean, if you want, you can do that. Are, are we gonna get Are we gonna get taken down? Uh, who knows? We might. You know, I I've gotten DMCA locked. I've gotten DMC locked off my Twitter account three times today. People are up my asshole. Okay, I want Nadia, Nadia to come here. Oh, I would shy away. You said 16? Yes. Okay. You guys want to know why I'm sometimes I'm not a content machine IRL with other people? Yes, I love this shit. Because this is the truth. This is my safe space. This is my safe space. Before I hit live with anyone, usually we've already spent days together. And I like developed a personal friendship no. with them this is like before i go live i've never actually the only person i've ever streamed with irl that was just on stream was destiny literally every other person that i ever streamed with irl i had spent days with them beforehand that's cool okay this is amazing this feels great I'm glad. I'm glad you feel a little bit better. You That's why that. I'm not a content machine with mean? them because I already I'll fucking yeah. know them. Um, not very often, but I will drink today because Nadia, um, told me that she can only come here if she if she's allowed to drink. Okay. So I brought. I think her she's friends with a friend of mine who's a street uh, artist. Which who? They've done like he's done work with her before. I think. Absent. Uh, I don't. I mean, know. you wouldn't. Know. She will know. I think. I think he did like some some pussy riot stuff before. Okay. 
But I, I brought three white claws Ew. and Modelo for Nadia. Okay. And Pussy Riot. Ew. All right. Get yeah. Get cracking. Ew. Um. Can can you guys hear me well now? Nazis. Even over the music, by the way. Wait, are they are Nazis. they not being able to hear me this whole time? There was always some issues. Yeah. Yeah. Federal. One hundred percent federal. Okay. How do you live like this though? On air. For me, for me, when I'm on, this is like this is my safe space. I feel more comfortable doing this than anything else. This on shit the is good for I'm you. I'm so used to it. It's literally like fucking breathing. You're what? I four wake years up. In? Yeah, I wake up. I'm I'm built for this. Like I don't know how else to describe it. This is something that I I love doing, and I have a really cool community, so it's, it's super easy to do as well. Uh, where um, I can just I can just wake up. I work out. It doesn't feel like a job at all. It's awesome. The working out. The yeah. The working out is so. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have some hobbies. What do you? What are your hobbies? You play Elden Ring. What else? Mm. Like Harvest Moon. Mm, I love Harvest Moon. Um. Debate about communism now. Um, what are my hobbies? I like drawing and shit. I don't know. Making, yeah. Making stuff. Making. You got, you got a little make, sneaky deviant make, art somewhere that we can find. Where where can we find your drawing? Uh, I don't have a deviant art. I don't really post shit online. You guys know I'm scared to type in Hassan's chat. Because I'll tell you why. I will never type in his chat. Because the minute I type in his chat, I get banned. And if I get banned, I'll never be able to see his chat again. So I can't I can't type in that chat. No, I'm not. I don't want to get banned so I, I can't see the chat ever. Sometimes I click us on stream and watch for like 45 seconds, okay? Like when he's playing Elden Ring, you know... I remember a few weeks ago, I, I, I uh, clicked on a stream, and I just sat there for like a minute. And I was like, huh. You know, I want to see the chat. Create my voice. It's just directed by the editor. Hostanox is not like actually something that's just like, you know, running around saying shit in my voice. It's curated like that, like how NPC would... Like yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um... Yeah, the person who's going the person who's gone rogue is Austinox, my editor. <laughs> Gets me fucking canceled sometimes like when I bought Bro, that take. Bro, the guy in chat awoke. You're dumb as hell, dude. I don't think there's ever a case where streamers hook up after when they meet and they just stream together and then afterwards they hook up. That's not how it works. Okay? Usually they were already hooking up when they met. Then they streamed together. And there you go. <laughs> it's fine. This is an absurdity. Okay, I'll, I'll just say this much. You pop off on text messages. Like you're like writing fucking like letters uh, in debate mode. How would I know? Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. Why do you have so much red all over? What happened? Oh, um, because I, 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 blood. I, yeah, it's fake blood. I, I, because I was, um, video Jesus I, Christ. Doing a, vid a video, a video. Yeah, I, I had to be on a pile of corpses, and so, um, their blood is all over me. Yeah, I see that. I didn't want to say anything. That, I was like, but fuck. The, the reason I, the re the reason I can't get spicy today is 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 because we've been shooting nonstop, uh -huh. and and I'm. I'm toasted. I'm like. Otherwise, you're like, I'd fucking wreck you in the marketplace of ideas. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think we could actually have a really good rational debate and come, come to some. I hate debates. Middle grounds. No, not debate. Not debate. I think debates are bullshit. Here's, here's what I think. Here's what. Here's what I think. I, I think. I think everybody is really fractured, um, and uh, there are a lot of people that actually want the same outcome, which is like, you know more equality like better quality of life i think some people don't want equality i'm just i i don't D depends how you define a a equality but like oh really equality andy where was my equality when i was in la and you were in a gated house in a palace in a kingdom i was on the street where was my equality you could have at least me let me use the pool three million dollar house in west hollywood Talking about equality. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm trying to get this. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
think that they have the best intentions I'm for other kidding. people. But I, I think a lot of times it manifests itself in like very deeply selfish ways. Like the environment is a great example of this where it's like, you know, you got short term profits or uh, <laughs> capitalist corporations uh, taking, uh, you know, taking. <laughs> this dude, Hassan's literally just trying to sleep. <laughs> you got people go, Hassan, you believe in equality? Then share your bed with me. <laughs> Share your bathroom with me, Hassan. Dude's taking his shit. Literally just trying to take his shit. <laughs> oh, you believe in equality, huh, Hassan? How about you give me half that toilet paper? <laughs> no, on a real note, that's what ha it's, you know, it's not his fault because of his ideology. It's his fault because his ideology doesn't allow him to just take a stand and be like, nah, this is my shit, bitch. You know what I mean? Like a man who can't say this is my shit, bitch. That's a sad life. See me. Let's say that three million dollar house was mine. Somebody knocks. Says, oh, how's you're a communist. Then let me use your house. I'd be walking out in a beater. Wearing my briefs. With a beater on. I said, whose house? Well, get the fuck out of here, bitch. This is my shit, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Hassan can't do that. Hassan would be like, all right, listen, right? we'll negotiate. Like, you know what I mean? That's why. That's why this, he falls victim to that shit. They're like pro-LGBT, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. usually. Um, or at least like artificially, right? Yeah. They, they will act like they care about certain things. But the... It is not just... That I believe in luxury and wealth, okay? I also believe in ownership. Like, this is my shit, bitch. I own it. It is attached to my fucking ball sack. It is fucking mine, bitch. Even if... Even this thing right here. This is mine, bitch. If you touch it, your hand will be removed in a video game. made their their uh, money a certain way and uh have really really well guarded and rigid worldviews that refuse to dream about a different way that the economy could be organized i, I think what people misunderstand about me huh. is that like who are you I talking just about try everything who are you talking I'll about try everything once like i'm throwing paint at the wall all the time you know like I've been wrong a million fucking times. Me too. Like, I was just talking to Koto on the way here about uh, creativity and, like, uh, the creative muscle. And can't like, relate. Um, I can't relate. You know, it's like... I can't relate because I've never been wrong, bitch. Things. I'm not calling her that. I'm saying like an the audience in general. I'm sorry, please. And, like, it's just like... I'm an artist. I'm not a politician. I feel like my job is literally to, like, ideate about shit. A ton of it might be stupid and some of it might be cool and just like throw it out there and like people who are like good at executing can take what they will yeah, just be inspired by it too. and and like you know i think people a lot a lot of times people think i'm like endorsing or saying something is like my worldview when i'm just really just like i just like to try shit you like out. the vibes you I, like I, the I, aesthetic I, I, I like to i like to work shit out in public i like to like try things out in public I, I like to like like is this a thing is this gonna work is this is this an option is like yeah i don't believe okay. in creativity um, do you sense, but so i believe speaking in trying things in public i have to ask you this did you read the communist manifesto when i was like or was it 18. just like a photo shoot thing there when i was like okay that actual situation okay so that situation was like do you want to know like that what yes. actually just happened there because like Basically, no. the paparazzi had been following me for like four or five days. Everywhere no. I went, they were outside my house. Um, and they I like- That was a good fit fell. too, by the way. You look good. It fell on the ground. That's, that's, that's a great outfit. I love this Yeah, what was going on? Eat that, now? I was actually doing a photo shoot for this outfit. So basically what happened was- Does that mean I have to eat it The paparazzi now? had been chasing me for days. I was gonna save it. And then they finally, like they chased, they did, had like a crazy car chase with my brother because they thought, they thought I was in the car. And then my brother- Fucked up. 
it, it was it's fucked up. And then finally my my brother like pulled over and was just like, look, what? Like what the fuck do you want? And and then the guy was like, look, I'm on assignment. I, I need a photo of Grimes. Like I need like I I can't leave you guys alone until I get this so I can get it like you guys can like help me out here or else I'm just gonna like keep stalking you. What's up with your fingernail there? What's going on? That shit's crazy. Uh, I just had like the glue ons and we were just kind of like letting them fall off and it was a mess. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I was just sort of like casually gluing on fake nails and letting them fall off at will, whatever. It, it was a haphazard situation. Um, and then so uh, the guy was like, it's gonna happen whether you like it or not. So like, you know. That's really fucked up. It's really fucked up. Yeah. It, it's I, gonna happen whether you like it or not. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, and 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 like it had been like days of being chased by them. So uh, it I looks like, beautiful look, okay, in these photos. Photo I'm not even kidding. On this day, I'll be in glam and, and I'll I'll be like ready. I'll be I'll be like camera ready because I'm already shooting something else. Why don't you just roll in there? Like, I'll come out on the street for 10 minutes. You can get your fucking picture and then just fuck off and please leave me alone. Wait, why Why the Comedy's Manifesto? Also, so, so, you, so, you ripped it. You, that, so, I mean, it looks red. No, so we were just at my friend's house and like, like, it, it just like, literally, this is just like literal thoughtlessness and not thinking very hard. Like, I, like I, was, I was at my friend's house and, and like. Friend of the Comedy's Manifesto? Yeah. Look, she, my, my she looks beautiful in these yeah, photos. I'm not even kidding. I love these photos. Photo um... Like my friend was like CP uh, was say twenty thirty six photos. And my friend was like, "Yo, like bring a book. It, it'll be funny." Um, and we had like a confederacy of dunces and like the communist manifesto. And like uh, my friend was like, "Oh, communist manifesto would be so spicy." And I was like, "Oh yeah, oh man, yeah, that, that'll make a scene." Like like we were just like literally not thinking and just being. But you were shit posting. It's we, fine. We were just being stupid. We like we didn't realize this was like gonna be a big serious thing that was gonna like trend worldwide. We, we I, I just wanted this guy to leave us the fuck alone. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'm in glam. I'm done. Let's just like go on the street for five minutes. I'll just like roll out with this book. It'll be funny. Like, right, it'll why probably, were you wearing like, that? Like, make a minor stink on the internet. Grimes, you don't have to lie. There's no shame in taking a photo. Okay. Guys fucking following us. You know. Because we, we were like day five. Why is Hassan playing Oblivion music? He's insulting her. <laughs> uh -huh. He's playing Oblivion music. <laughs> like, so it was, it was just like, I was just not thinking. I, I just like did not think it would be that big a deal. I, and, here, I'll, I'll get and turn on your mic too. I was just gonna say, I wish Hassan was an asshole. He'd be the funniest guy in the world. <laughs> Like, this, this was like not a this was like not a premeditated thing. This was this was a like like people everybody's like drinking beers and not thinking that hard and like like uh like oh shit the communist manifesto oh that's gonna be sp like we I don't know we were we guys were being fucking, like, I'm telling you the truth yeah stupid and and then so I was like okay I'm ready I'll go on the street and then I Hassan is not an asshole like, he's book. literally a good and guy he he's like a good sensitive guy. Like, Good. Can you leave us alone now? And the reason and people hate him is because of that. We're done. Um, and I went back in, and I like did not think it would be like a big. Because it makes him seem like he has no self-awareness. Uh, uh, turned out to be a massive. Your book? It was not my book. You're, why are you lying? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Oh, I don't. Nadia is here. Nadia is here. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't want to reveal whose book it was because they don't. They don't need. They don't. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't want to. They don't want to get red scared. Cost, like, to use as a photo shoot. They don't want to. Yeah. They don't want to get red scared. I, I. I feel like everyone thought this was like a really pre. The brothel thing. Oh yeah, that was fucked up. But you know what? Yeah, that was fucked up. Shit, I forgot about that. He was twenty. It's not that I hate him personally for that. I just don't think it sets a good example, you know? Even if you did that, you should at least be like, that was a mistake. Don't ever do that. Like, you know, I just care about the messaging to the public. I'm not a, not, you know. Is sort of not actually. Oh, yeah, he defended it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's indefensible. And she can't help it. What? That is a very Canadian quality of yours. No, it's actually pretty fucked up. Not gonna lie. It's just like how we roll. Okay. Uh, like, like I apologize. Like I'll say sorry. Like not even 
it's just like part of the verbiage. It just comes out. Yeah, it happens. I mean, you don't have to, but it's cool. Okay, so you don't have to apologize about apologizing. I'm, I'm not. I'm not apologizing for carrying the communist manifesto here. Um, I'm just sort of explaining that it wasn't some like weird premeditated situation. It was just a like, like, oh my god, can we please get the paparazzi to stop following us? For, okay. You know. So, um, okay, what about the outfit? The outfit, is, the outfit is tight, though. Nadia, yes, fuck, yes, 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 yes. Um, let me, uh, let me see what I can do about the camera here. Maybe. Do you, do you know who she is? Uh, I mean, not her personally, no, but I know, I know Pussy Riot. I know of Pussy Riot. I love nice your job. You. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, how do we, let's make this. Yeah, as long oh, as you no. don't, like, you know. This is the federal agent from Pussy Riot? And showing parts of their bodies. He's like Sharia law. What is he I'm so, I can never die. Yeah, it's we just... You, 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 you might be on porn. Yikes, do I have to cover the... Um, is the yeah, son about to get not, himself banned? Porn with other people. Okay, do you want to... No, 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 Twitch is not like porn. Twitch is like the opposite of porn. I brought, they, they... I brought you some white claws as well. Um, I would go for Prosecco. What's Prosecco? What is Prosecco? I don't know what that is. Holy shit, there's a lot of alcohol. Okay. She's Russian. Yeah, I feel that. It's cool. Here you go. Say. <laughs> um. I don't know how to whip a whip. Is that a whip? Ow. Oh. Fuck. No. <laughs> I whipped myself in the face. Okay. Yeah, can you show me? Okay. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Can I tell you, can I be really mean about something, guys? Okay, I wanna, wait. I'm not referencing anyone in particular. I'm just, this is just a thought that came to my head in a completely coincidental way. So whenever there's these people who are like, I'm gonna protest conservative traditional restrictions on sexual freedom. They also end up getting this idea that like, and that also means I'm really hot. And it's like, no, wait, no, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. Okay, you know, you're getting a little carried away with yourself because, you know, I always say this. Let's say people are like fighting, like, I want to be able to show, you know, my tits in public. That's like that group, demon or whatever in Europe. You never ask the question, though. Everyone Hassan wants to is see my pegged like, th like there's these feminists who are like everyone wants to see my tits, but the government's stopping me. And it's like, well, have you ever thought that you shouldn't do that because nobody wants to see it? You ever thought about that one? You know, it's like it's just this way for people to it's a way for unattractive people to cope with this idea that they're attractive and that the reason that you know yeah you know, that you know what maybe we should have Sharia law honestly because. You know, I'm saying there's a lot of people who should, you know, th like, you're not hot. You're not hot. You're not fucking sexy or whatever the fuck you're trying to do. And you know what? That's not because of the the church. That's because of fucking nature, you know? It's not the church that, you know, made you unattractive. You know? You hate God, but, you know, it ain't the priest's fault you're not attractive, you know? I'm just saying. <laughs> How does it feel that your arch nemesis is getting laid tonight and you haven't gotten laid in a long time? But define a long time, you know. Honestly. One second. Yes. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Yo, I'm scared. <laughs> I appeared and suddenly it became two months. Uh, no, hasn't been that long. Fiona, 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 we love you. <laughs> Fiona, we don't want to fuck What is my chat, dude? Guys, what is wrong with y'all? 
What is wrong with y'all? Okay. No, I don't want one. I'm, yeah. I'm not drinking. Um. Because you're healthy. It's so good. Not to drink. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, there's been, um, too many events lately. That sounds like, no, don't hit my Funko Pops. But <laughs> where is oh Where's here? Just following stereotypes. Cheers, guys. Can we move on? I kind of want to see this. I want to see more. I want to see them debate. We have a lot lined up today, anyway. So it's like you know we can take our time a little bit, right? Oh fuck! Get my phone over here. Okay. Okay. I'm glad I made it. You guys met. Grimes said you guys met two years ago. Do you know who Absinthe is? ABCNT, I think he's done some art for you guys. Like Pussy Riot back in the day. No, what would he do? He's like an LA based artist. I thought. <gasps> Fiona. This dude. Is I think I know. Shrek? Is, she, is this dog named after the Shrek lady? Oh, I didn't know this how he pronounced his name. Yeah, I definitely know him. This um, dude. It's not that he done art for us, it's just he he's done art that was. Um, like, let me give you an example, right? You know, Gloria Steinem is like a big feminist. She's like, I'm a big feminist and I'm launching an only. It's like, wait a second. You don't have to do that. Oh, man, I'm doing a live stream with this psycho. And then you're like, I'm going to bring my friend over. And she brought a whip and, and started whipping everything. <laughs> I'm actually on, um, on the way to my performance. So it's like, it are you performing tonight? Like, are you playing tonight? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's the yeah. Chief Gallery. Um... Okay, why How you said um is there is there more? No. Um Dark Souls of Elden Ring. Gaming. I'll do that. Elden Ring. We can play Elden Ring. Do you play games? Naughty doesn't play games. You don't play games? I play games just with Putin. You play yeah, games with what? With, with Putin? Putin? She plays games with Putin. Yeah, am I gonna get assassinated do, do you know now? About Nadia? Do you know what Nadia does? Uh, I'm a l I'm familiar Nadia's with. Nadia's been in was in prison for two years. I'm in, in I'm Russia. I'm familiar with uh yeah I'm familiar with some of your work yes. Not the recent stuff because I think you have OnlyFans too now right is that yeah. So well, you can't OnlyFans? no you can't promote it uh, on on Twitch. I think it's good. I mean you you definitely you can't promote it's, OnlyFans on Twitch. Better than record label for sure. Why can't you pr promote? Ah. Uh, what are my comments? My comments are. Ah. Uh, I don't know if Putin's the one who um would is the reason you shouldn't do that. Straight up, not allowing it. You know what I mean? Um. That, whatever. All right. All right. I mean, that's an <laughs> to each their own. Are you? Is that hard to hear? Am Can I hear? still so quiet? It's not you. I think it's. By the way. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Imagine calling yourself a man. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Imagine calling yourself a man. <laughs> and buying nudes. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! It don't get any worse than that. It doesn't get any worse than that. <laughs> oh shit! Go do Twitch mm -hmm. and your own hard-earned labor, your own sweat, your <laughs> your own hard-earned money. <laughs> Oh, God. And then, you know, bro, you know there's dudes who get that shit for free? You know dudes get that shit for free? Voluntarily? But you're paying your hard-earned money. Yeah, every day. Oh, really? Okay. I've been here for an hour or two? No. I feel like our first hour was weak. I, I feel like we... I, we were getting, we were, I, I mean, you were I'm, getting I'm comfortable. Gonna, I'm gonna come back and be spicier later. I'm just like, dude, you don't have to worry you, about you, it. You're no, fine. No, 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 no. Let's no, see. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um. Chat. What do I look up for hot tubs? I want to show them hot tub streamers. 
Yeah. Like I, I, I like I want to be spicy. My brain is just too. I I've had to. I have a bad feeling Hassan's about to get banned, and we're gonna get banned too if we show it. Hurts. Yeah. It's just like he's gonna like click something, and it's gonna be like titties out. Actually, if it's on Twitch, you can't get banned for that, can you? There's a giant dick in a cage. There yeah. was a giant dick in a cage. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, why? This is the hot tub wait, section. Wait, wasn't the dick in the cage in your house? It was in my house. Yeah, yeah that was your yeah. house. What? Yeah. Dick in a cage? Wait, what's the, going on there? <laughs> there's a giant pe this. penis in a cage in her house. Um, why do you yeah. have a giant penis in a cage in your house? It is uh, from my music video. It's coming out in two weeks. I was, I, was wondering, I was wondering about that. I was, I was wondering about the dick in the cage. But that, that was like the least eventful part. Ew. That's so fucking satanic and cringy. What happened with him? Uh huh. What no, I'm asking you. What 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 happened between you and Putin? Mm, he doesn't like me. I think he learned about my existence in 2012, and then ever since he doesn't really like me. Uh huh. Yeah. Why why do you think why do you think that's the case? Well, I don't know. Um, well, it's a long answer actually, but I think it's partly based on the fact that I um dedicated my life to. Um, remove him from power and he's, he's not he's not really fond of people like that and also he particularly doesn't like girls when they try to take too much power in his, um, in his am i allowed to say she's not as cute as she thinks she is the way she's acting i'm not allowed to say that okay i won't say it um well that's honestly pretty devastating for me because i've been traveling to ukraine quite a lot and um i know a lot of activists, like from from anarchist groups to um, to members of to, to neo Nazis and the Azov Battalion and anarcho Nazis and Banderites. I know a lot of those people. We're all against Putin. Against interests mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I escaped there yeah. in 2016, but um, then after that, I moved. Um, yeah, I spent a couple of weeks. I made a music video with the Blood Bass. Because I felt like um, just cutting myself. Instead, I decided to make a video with blood bass. Um, so yeah, and Ukraine is amazing. You know, if you take a look at recent history of Ukraine, it's uh, 2004. She talks uh, about shit like I was with all these like active anarchist groups. Yeah, what is so anarchist of being fucking funded and supported by the fucking U.S. deep state and fucking NED and George Soros and shit like? Where's the Anna? Well, abolish order and society, except the world's biggest fucking police state and world police power in the fucking world. I generally like to be part of revolutions, especially in places that I really love and trust trust people there. Hmm. Yeah. Fuck. I really started to make home like Vitalik Buterin. It's it's impossible. I'm too deep in crypto. Okay, someone said you raised seven point one million dollars in, in in crypto for Ukraine. Is that? Mm -hmm. So what's up? How much is it? How Ukraine much is down. it worth right now? Like six million, or are we talking? Is it more now? Is it like eight million? I don't really know. I don't follow it that closely. But um, at the moment, when we raised and dispersed the money, um, it was seven. She became irrelevant, and she's trying to like create this like personality. Money was um, come back life. Um, it's a really, really super um, credible organization. That's um, um, well, they do a whole range of things. You know, from um, from buying guns for um, for Ukrainian military to finding um, to mm, supplying them with um, body armor. Um, Literally funding neo Nazis. That's what she's doing. Um, I'm just like so cute i'm like so cute and quirky i love video games i'm best friends with grimes i love playing elden ring also i funded mon money for genocidal nazis i gave money to nazis haha <laughs> i'm so cute i'm so cute i get i raise millions of dollars for nazis so cute <laughs> i'm like talking like a valley girl in california and la i'm so cute <laughs> <laughs> with the with the crypto uh well yeah of course i mean that, that's their goal um our money the furies they um they don't what up nikita um because that was the bill of the doubt honestly i do not support that because i think like we should be buying weapons agreed yeah you think yeah i'm, I'm like an anarchist but like we should be like with nato and weapons for nazis neo-nazis 
Peace and love, everyone. Weapons, yeah. Peace and love, I'm so cute. Yeah, weapons. She has this violent rage against her father and Putin. Jesus. Joe Biden's donation, um, which was uh, $600 million he sent initially to Ukraine. And you wanted to, you wanted to raise $600 million in weapons? Another $600 million of weapons? What, are you going to buy him a Bayrak thought? No, I didn't think uh, we would send him to weapons because I said, you know, it was um, oh. like the, the doubt because it wasn't. That sounds like, yeah, I'm pronouncing it in Turkish. I'm with you. <laughs> We're all NATO here in this room. If you ask me personally, if I raise $600 million, I would send them to buy weapons. Yeah. I, I definitely don't think so. But hey, you know, we, we just have a different. We have a difference in opinion there, but you know, there's yeah, a lot I mean, of like, guns. There could be opinions, but like there, there are people on the ground who tell us exactly what they need right now. Like, you no, know, starting from President Zelensky to just um, grassroots activists. And um, I mean, Tish was. Wait, I thought. Why do they need weapons when Russia's losing? I thought Russia's losing. In the last few days, though, uh, from several territories. Yeah. But, you know, it's not. Uh, it's not about hard for. Um, is it a formal? Is it a formal pullout right now, or is it just like they're losing? Yeah, they think he's too uh, Putinist. So the federal agent Grimes brought <laughs> the CIA agent here. <laughs> the way I read it, um, they lost uh, that part of the war that was yeah. dedicated to conquering whole Ukraine because I think the initial the initial um, plan was to enter Ukraine and um, hope that Zelensky is going to just. Um, run away and then he, he said that i don't need um that was not part of the plan at all american government asked the him plan was to fucking protect the donetsk and lugansk republics what are you talking um, about and they were fighting amazingly um and so i think we're gonna get to the oil depot thing after this cool in um yeah you know, like i have like guys i have like 50 tabs open we have a lot of news Yanukovych, ex-president Yanukovych, like like a lot of people think that uh, he's the guy who had to be installed after Zelensky by the Russian power. But Fuck, Hassan's is, getting fucked over. Uh, I mean, it would have been it would have been so dumb, but so was invading Ukraine. So who knows? You know what I mean? Like that would have been really stupid and unsustainable. Just like invading Ukraine overall was going to be stupid and unsustainable, and yet a lot of yeah, his did chats. That as well. Do you think Putin's gonna be ousted? His chats, Pepe laughing. I don't think so, but what do I know? What do you think? You're Russian. Do you think if he gonna be ousted? Do you think he's gonna be ousted? What is ousted? Like, uh, like, like coup d'état, uh, regime yeah. change. Mm. Regime She's change. so oh, mad um, about Putin. I... Look at the feminist rage at Putin. <laughs> Putin. <laughs> She's like trying to keep it together, acting calm and shit. But this is like after ten years of like unmitigated rage be brought by i don't uh, think by, so. uh internal could it happen? yeah, yeah. I, oh yeah no i wasn't yeah, saying yeah. internally i was so if it's a, if it's a actually um mass people movement that's definitely going to be navalny but um when if it's just internal is it, fight, is, it, is, is, the be someone else. is the public support for navalny enough that like he, he could actually win a legit election right now Oh, if that's was... difficult to say. I mean, like, we can't talk about democracy in a real sense. Like, when we talk about Russia, it's a completely different um, model of governance. And uh, so I feel like a lot of Westerners, they actually make this um, mistake. Yeah, like, Zelensky is a true democracy, even though he banned all opposition parties and banned all alternative press. And even before the war, many journalists in Ukraine were starting to disappear. And under mysterious circumstances and rival politicians disappearing. But Zelensky banned all opposition parties. He's not a dictator. That's a democracy. Um, there is no ideal democracy in the world. I remember when I spoke with um, Noam Chomsky, ask him like, what, what is, uh, in his opinion, is uh, the greatest democracy that he's seen. He never gave me an answer. He just gave me 30 minutes um talk about something else so i think like even the smartest people they don't really have an answer to this question. ukraine is yeah. a democracy you like, you like mm -hmm. okay. i i was thinking to go to events and um it doesn't matter like different different kinds of events and just jump on people and scream at them like you are not Noam chomsky and just <laughs> being, uh, looking really disappointed and leave after that I wish she came to the CPI conference and screamed at us. We would have all laughed at her. <laughs>
He's um, a great scientist who is also a great thought leader. And unfortunately, he's um, kind of old, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to Not kind of old. He's like 900 years old. I mean, I love, I love Noam Chomsky as well. He's just very, very old, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, I really... Sometimes I'm is there, is there scared a, to wake up to. Okay, I'm gonna do has Vosh level body language analysis. So Hassan is clearly very nervous, and he's like, whenever Hassan encounters an ideological enemy, like part of his like, okay, code red, code red, code red, code red. Tread carefully. We cannot trust. This is not a, a friend. This is enemy. And like he's getting very nervous. He's about to sweat and shit. Cool ideas in the public right now that it's like it's. It, we we've like misaligned the incentives of he looks like at any moment he's about to explode and he's gonna be like why the fuck are you saying <laughs> i wish he would i wish he would maybe i'm over analyzing i don't know <laughs> a lot of these figures that like we had before even though i think they exist like i feel like i know people like this there is slavoy slavoy is great so slavoy <laughs> Zizek? Yeah. yeah yeah but he's so old too He's not at all. Yeah, he's, he's going like to fifth. What? He'll he'll he's, he'll live. He's, he'll he's live so, for a he, long he, time. He's like he's like he's not. Ah, cringe. You know who's been disgusting about this conflict too? Zizek. Zizek has become like genocidal. He's become a full Nazi. It's undisgusting. I never would have expected that to happen, which is so sad because infrared. We all started out as Zizek disciples for like ten years. And he's, he's become so disgusting about this conflict. You know, he used to even be a little more nuanced. Now he's just full on being fucking complete anti-Russian chauvinist. I'm not sure his homo deus stuff. I haven't actually read homo deus, but well, I don't know. But I, I disavow Zizek 100% for what he said. But you should uh, dig his um, um, conversations. And I'm not having him on my stream. I am not going to have him on stream. Hell no. That guy's in the enemy camp. That guy's in fucking NATO. I'm only having Warsaw Pact people in my stream. I will have Nick Land way before Zizek. Nick Land is always welcome. Zizek is not. Dugan is obviously VIP level. Dugan's way better than Zizek. Way better. Way better. I kind of want to like keep this day less intense i also just feel like everyone's are we going to get canceled for that i'm, I'm not i'm not even worried about us getting canceled <laughs> if someone gets canceled here it'll be me you have positions that no, are no, like no 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 we, I we, think... we, we both get canceled I, 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 no no i mean like on a weekly basis you have, you, <laughs> like, i think I you have positions out. that are more uh, uh agreeable with like the overarching uh neoliberal attitude than us? i do base that he said that yeah i mean yeah. People, people say I'm a, a shill for Russia across the board because I said that it would be fucking insane <laughs> for Vladimir Putin to invade he's Ukraine. Going. And that it would have been, you know, it, that it was never going to happen. That it was not going to happen. Did you think that Vladimir Putin was going to invade Ukraine before the invasion no, no, happened? No, um, it was, um, I was so surprised. I was thinking it's um, right? just a bluff. Yeah. It was fucking insane. Like, I, I, Isn't she like 32 years old? This reminds me of Madonna in that music video. I'm sorry, there's nothing more unattractive. Fucking Zelensky did There's nothing more unattractive than people who are trying to resist growing up. She's literally dressing like a fucking high school schoolgirl. And she's like 33 years old. It's actually so cringy. It's so it's just it it exudes such cope energy. It exudes such coping energy. Holy shit. We've never had peace. I don't believe that. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, no, no, proper, not proper peace. But, but, but like, just, just like, st like, bold invasions for territory like this. Like, like, like. What do you mean? Israel no, annex, no, Israel no. annex Golan Heights. I mean, or yeah, Israel's yeah, entire yeah, existence. Yes, but that, that's sort of been this ongoing thing. That, that, that's like, that's like a thing that has just been ongoing. Like, like a, a new, like a, a full stop, just kind of like new, like, um, I think what you're looking, the term like, you're looking like, for like, is like, in the West. Like, 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 I don't think it's totally out of question that the U.S. Yeah, it's true. In, in, in the West. The, the, in, but in, I thought to be the, decided it for the West. But, but, but I don't think it's totally out of question that the U.S. tries to invade Canada at some point in the coming. <laughs> no, that's never. Years. What? No, we would never do that. Canada is already like. It would, it would be, why does Grimes know about this? She knows about our plans. 
Hey, Are you I trying to get canceled? The fuck? Oh, this is why they don't let me go on. Okay, that's I say that all the time, but I say it as a joke. Why does she even know about that? Hey, that's awesome. The fuck? How does she know? The United States should America. You listen. Canada has been America. Canada has been America's hat for far too long. It's time to take it over. This is why they don't let me do interviews. It's time to take it over. Hey. <laughs> Say in a video game. Yeah, Canadians, <laughs> Canadians, how, how do you, how, you like that fucking healthcare, bitch? Guess what, dude? We're privatizing it. <laughs> um, no, I agree with you. We should. We should invade Canada. <laughs> you should invade Canada because you have this. You, 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 oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, no, 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 go off. Go off, queen. I, I agree. Straight up. Be, because you, 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 you'd bring in like this, ama like a voter base that would, that would base. like re really help your. Nine like, years of we should invade Canada rising. and then we should Let's liberate do. Quebec. Okay, that's what we're Ke doing. Quebec should be li should maybe be liberated. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, invade Canada. I probably missed a ton of donations. Holy shit! I didn't add the fucking um tips thing. Shit. Yeah, I just added it. Fuck. Anyone who donated, I'm so sorry. I'm literally so sorry. Let me see. Did anyone do it? Ah, uh, fuck. I didn't add the new browser source donation thing. Yeah, someone did. Fuck. I'm sorry, dude. I'll refund you. This. My manager is doing this. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I don't think Canada's um, voter base is that educated either. Trust. I mean, you guys still no, have like, Justin I think, Trudeau. I think people in Canada, like our our like random public schools, are like pretty decent. Come oh no, Canada has Canada. way better social safety nets than America yeah, does yes. for sure. Canada donated eighty. Did you? I didn't. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Oh okay. Just even our healthcare situation. Yeah. When I first came here, if we, I love your healthcare situation. If we invaded, if we invaded you guys, though, you're fucked. We're privatizing that shit, like in My a second. My daughter is Canadian. Your daughter's Canadian. Nice, yes. nice. Mm. How was she born there? Um, Watch your phone, she... by the way. Don't reveal any information if you don't. Yeah, want we, it. we shouldn't get into this shit because we could get fucked. Um, she's fine with that. Um, I'll share her. I've dad seen, I've is, seen uh, both too. Canadian and Russian citizenship. Oh, nice, nice, nice. nice. Um. Oh, you're taking a photo? Hi. No, it's a video, actually. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I look stupid, probably. Oh. As we all do. I like your hand tats. Thank you. Um. Cringe. Did to invade. Cringe. Where else, where else should America invade? It, it hasn't. <laughs> Long time coming, honestly, Canada. Fucking watch out. I mean, I, I personally think we should, we should, um, well, do you want to hear some of my weird theories? Bro, uh, you're literally 32. You're acting like a child. Actually cringy. Come here. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm gonna, no, I'm, let's have another. Why don't we talk about crypto? I think let's that's gonna be less controversial. Let's talk about crypto. Like, <laughs> wait, I want to hear, I want to hear. Shockingly, okay, give me less, one more, give me one more. I want to hear it. Shockingly, it can be less controversial. Shockingly, crypto can be, be less, less controversial, controversial than, than anything. Than, 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 <laughs> Oh, shit, I'm about to say, but I I do want to I do want to come back one day for the spicy chat, but let's not do that. Today. <laughs> you did. I, I feel like you're never gonna you're gonna be like, oh man, this is fucking. You know, you said some stuff. That, did you hear? Uh, did you do streams before together? Huh? No. 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 Um. No. 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 <laughs> just like, no. 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 Never. No, because no, we no, were no, supposed no, to. We were supposed to like a million times, and then you know she was just never in LA, or when she was in LA, she was like, I'm shooting stuff. I can't do it. Well, cause I don't organize my schedule, so you're asking me to, or like. No, I know. How do you talk about Crimea? How can your team not organize with my team? I'm 35. No, I'm not. I'm 25, but I'm turning 26 this year, which is actually scary. Fuck. Like they don't touch any of this, cause what are they gonna organize? I gotta start acting my age, honestly. Every day to 7 p.m. That's it. I just don't know where I'm gonna be at at any given day it just changes all the time and like i just like look at my google schedule thing and then i just go where they tell me also it's april fools so you can just say it's april fools if you have an idea that's oh, yeah. like wild you could be like i was just doing an <laughs> april fools no, no, but, like part, part 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 of the thing i wanted to, part part of the thing i wanted to say is it's, like it's a shield it's like i i, I uh 
everyone thinks I'm a politician and nobody thinks you're a politician no one, I promise no, but pe- pe- people 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 get get, <laughs> get 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 very mad at me people get very mad at me for espousing ideas no, people get t- people take everything seriously because they're fucking stupid okay that has no, nothing to do no, with they're like not, they're not fucking stupid because no you, they are they're f- <laughs> people are fucking I'm stupid and most people are fucking I'm, stupid I am s- shockingly stupid no me too no, I, like <laughs> yeah no but way also, <laughs> Let me see. Well, really quick. What is this? Do you hear it? Info? Running for Congress. <laughs> That's <how> I like it. <laughs> oh, based. I love Knut. Knut's so fucking cool. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not serious it's not like a serious thing um but there's a problem with the internet where people literally will take anything you're saying and be like this is the most serious thing you've ever said also i don't know if i even gave a shit about whatever the subject matter was that you mentioned but now i'm the subject expert and also i'm very pissed off about what you said because i disagree with like three percent even if i agree with 97 percent. it's just dumb as fuck it's just very people love being argumentative Especially because it's one of the few ways that they can get an interaction out of you. Because ultimately, that is the goal. The goal is to get some kind of reaction from you. No, I, I think I, th- I think there is also an aspect of like, people are suffering. Shit is hard. Uh, True. It, it's scary to hear people in public say things that like could be destabilizing for so- society. Um, and uh, I don't think it's a destabilization. I think it's like... You're right, though. You you are absolutely correct. You nailed it. It's because people are suffering, and they're angry, and you are an immediate target they can grab onto. Which is fine. I'm ready to be there. That's where I'm at. You know, like I'm, yeah. I'm fine to be a target. Like I feel liber <laughs> I feel liberated to be a target. Khabib, <laughs> Hassan, you're the one who attacked Grimes, dude. You're the one who did it. Yeah, maybe. Well, do you think that's something you had to learn? Like, because uh, like with social media, it's like the mental health aspect's hard. Like, it's not easy to just like be like, oh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, no, I don't think we should be fine with that. We can we can leave with that. But I hate um, but haters. You, you, I hate them. You can't control the world around you. You can only control how you react to it. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta like learn to be mm-hmm. cool cool with it. Like I just like accept the reality of the situation. People are gonna be mad at me. That's cool. And, like, I actually feel liberate, liberated by that because it's like, okay, like, well, there's literally nothing left to lose at this point. So mm-hmm. I can just fucking talk, right? And it's, and it's like... Yeah, know, that's what I was saying. Pop off. Like, talk more about how you want to invade I, Canada. I, I, I want to wanna pop off more uh, at a different time. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm it's just, fine. It's fine. Like, like, you don't understand. I've been on set for, like, fucking four days. I've been on camera. I, I had to be fucking naked in, in, a, in a rooms full of, like, 40 people for the last, like, three days. I am... Why? Uh, uh, because of my own stupid artistic decisions. <laughs> the shot. What? What the fuck is she talking about? But are um, you going to put on clothes later, um, and, or you're going to appear naked? I'm just going to appear naked. I, I I'm just like done with fashion. I I, I just uh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I think uh, nudity. I, I I think sort of yeah. Anyway, that's a different topic for, mm-hmm. for a different day. But um, I just, like, can't think about clothes right now because they are tied to the fashion industry and whatever. Anyway, uh, 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 um, uh, like, trying to create timeless shit, not shit that's tied to uh, fall, winter, 2022, or whatever the fuck. Um, uh, but uh, what were we talking about? Um, Look at this guy. He knows. There's a different he knows about fashion. I love him. He's you like the, Bernie Sanders? He's the only person it's a bold um, who made me starstruck. Yeah, he's, he's the man. He's suspiciously tall. He's like... Oh, he's tall. Yeah, he's like 6'4". Even with the fucking slump. That's what I'm saying. My, my, my greatest fault is, is that I'm fucking short. It's not... <laughs> no one cares. No, you're fine. God, Bernie's like the most cringe, yesterday's irrelevant politician ever. When I was at the Young Turks, but I've never, I've never personally interviewed him on this. Sh- this is like a group project in school where the popular girls get paired with the nerdy kid. 
It's actually true. <laughs> I was. Um, well, you went to her bar. You were just I chilling. Her bar. Yeah. Wait, when she was running? Mm, when when she was um yeah she was she was a waitress she was a bartender. But like but you mean like after she was running not because no. not like randomly. No 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 randomly randomly Union Square and I never lived in New York I just came to New York for a few days. But you met her like as a person on the street just vibe. Um in um in her bar in Union Square. Yeah. But she had no aspirations at the time no. to like run. I mean, maybe she had in the back of her mind, but that's crazy. She didn't tell me about it. Um, yeah. Wait, her, you talked to her. You were like hanging out with her. Mm, her friend um, is my friend, and we were making a music video together. Um, straight out of totally not CIA guys. And, totally not CIA. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> what's that uh, about? Birth. It's an, it's on YouTube. You can watch it. Um, can I? I feel like I can't watch that. No, it's okay. It's uh, on like, Twitch, I can't maybe because Twitch has different like nudity restrictions. No, there is no nudity. There is a kid actually in the music video. There is a ten years old kid, so it's like completely safe. Yeah, we don't know if that means it's safe or not, given your social circles and you know your powerful allies, Nadia. We don't actually know if it's going to be safe just because there's children. Because for you guys, children are not off limits, right? The concept of fate. But I, uh, I love the concept of magic. <laughs> so fate, kismet. And I don't like. Bit. I don't like fate because it. All right, what's gives going on with these tattoos? Explain that to me. Just. These are not tattoos. These are just. Um, you drew those. Stamp. Yeah. What about that one? Uh, you drew that as well. Um, it's an eyeliner. Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, Is this mental illness? Possibly. Is she kind of losing marbles over hatred of her own father? I don't know. It seems like that's a pretty common thing when they are against their own father and they start drawing things on their face. A garter hey, hey. With, the, yeah. with the orthodox. Yeah, I always have these orthodox crosses because yeah. they, they fucked me up let me, this time. <laughs> let me see if I can show that. Hold on. What? I'm trying to show it. You have no tattoos, Hassan? No, I do not. I was trying to show your... You're telling me not to do the voice. I don't trust her. She's going to do some shit. She's going to be revealing or some shit. Yeah, that was TOS. <laughs> That was definitely TOS. She oh, okay, yeah. That I feel you're repressed. I feel you're repressed. You're no, he's not gonna get banned for it, but I would have. Whatever you want, you know, but uh, Twitch is like incredibly, incredibly fucking strict about Why shit. Why do you <laughs> I was so guys, how fucking smart am I that I stopped it, that I covered it right there? How fucking smart am I? I know how these girls work. I know I I've met a lot of girls like this. I know exactly how they their minds work. The minute she stood up on their chair, I'm like, yeah, she's going to do some sexual shit. 1,000%. I know how that shit works, bro. Don't ever doubt me. It's not a double standard I'm enforcing. It's a double standard Twitch is enforcing. Do you understand? No, but I didn't understand why you asked me specifically. About because that guys, because if guys showed nipples or whatever, or or whatever then undergarments, it would not be. It, uh, no, I'm not saying you're showing your nipples. No, you're definitely assuming that you went. No, 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 you're misunderstanding you're me. Misunderstanding you're misunderstanding me. When I just came in here. Attention seeking, validation craving, insecure, 32 year old wants to feel hot and sexy. I know the fact. Like, it's just so clear. I'm just saying that on Twitch, and guys can do whatever the fuck they want, but they can do it on Twitch as well. Girls can't. All insecure women I've ever met in their life go out in public and just go out of their way to do shit like that because they're almost like saying, like, I'm sexy, right? And it's like, I don't know. To guests. I'm wondering, uh, now that she's here, should we get into crypto? Sure, we can talk about crypto. If, it, if it's the least spicy thing. Of all especially the, the especially because things. like i get i i uh what, what nothing what are you guys doing telephone over there i i just especially because like i have look i have a lot of haters and shit that like try to get me banned all the time Kodos having thoughts it's probably good for you to get banned no it's not i get banned all the time it's terrible i got banned for saying the c word and hurt white Cunt? people's he said he's probably gonna get banned <laughs> no 
Yeah. Where does you... Did he say he's probably going to get banned? No, don't say that. Because of what she did? Can't. Okay. Anyway, yes. The word is the saltine snack cracker. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. They're just... They just... Damn. This must have been intentional or something. Oh, God. Elon wins, I guess. I usually go from like 11 to 7 or I go further. Yeah, I do like 10 hours. Okay. Fine, what's up? Uh, our, we're talking about periods. Our, do you want me to mute? I can mute everything. Mute everything. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I literally have no idea what the fuck is happening. <laughs> I'm gonna cover it myself because I feel like the minute he they get he gets back, someone's gonna be naked. Oh god, that's fucking brutal. That's fucking brutal. She got offended and is having a word off, off stream. Uh, yeah, look, it's, it's super chill. You can like go make up if you want. Can I run to the bathroom, fix my makeup, and you guys talk for a bit? And yeah, I, 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 I come back. Okay. <laughs> and then, what, what, what should we talk about when I'm back though? Cool? We'll figure it out. Is is I'm free flow? Is free flow? Don't worry about it. You'll come and see what we're talking about. Huh? You'll come and see um whatever life brings us. See what you guys are on about. <laughs> I'm an idiot. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Here, there's some there's some paper towels right there. Thank if you, you want to drop it on there. What? Okay. Um. I spilled some something. Are you okay? Yeah, I am. But, um. I don't like the crazy. You can't even tell what's going on in her head, but you just know she's having thoughts like, I hate this Hassan guy. He's a Putin shell. Like, she's having really. It's scary how people hide their real thoughts, you know? It's really scary. Spilled a little bit of champagne <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> what? How did this look? <laughs> first time probably <laughs> that has never happened yes <sighs> hey at least it didn't break all good i mean it's just very fine now yeah <laughs> let's go back let's stop okay what were we talking about what do you want to talk about um i didn't know uh we were talking um, about crypto you like crypto you're a big crypto fan yeah, I I work a lot with crypto. I wouldn't say that I'm a fan. Um, I, I definitely embraced it as a tool for my activism. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not a big fan of crypto, but you're so you're not like a like a like a anti fiat currency. Like we need to fucking destroy fiat currency, like that type of person. No, or or think I mean, that like yeah, you just I see crypto's viability. I don't think a lot of people who use Ethereum. And everything they can build on top of Ethereum, there are those kind of people. They're more like Bitcoin maxis. And I didn't come so early. I came just um, early uh, last year. And uh, Yeah, Bitcoin people are more based. So, yeah, what's interesting to me is a um, possibility for wealth distribution. Um, and it's by no means a, um, a solution for global systemic problems, but I think... It's a um, really great way how you can... She's like the champion of Reddit. I like crypto and Rick and Marty, and I hate Putin, and I hate Russia, and I love Ukraine, and I like Banksy. How much you want to bet she likes Banksy? Banksy's going to have a new fucking um, art piece where, like, Putin is, like, going to have a Hitler mustache, and it's going to show, like, Ukraine is Harry Potter or some shit resisting... Like, 
Like, but you know that's just how this shit is. You know, this fucking... And and we are anonymous V for Vendetta. Like, Putin, you have 24 hours to leave Ukraine, or Reddit will unite to destroy. Like, wow, look at what's... Look at the... Well, look what fucking internet hacktivism has become, you know? I mean, like... Like, how do you see, like, Ukrainians, they, they, they should not defend themselves? Like, what, no, of think? course. Your... Uh, no, 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 I, I understand it. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. I think that um, the unfortunate reality is that, I mean, Russia is, regardless, in the wrong and should never have invaded Ukraine. You guys don't know what's fucking crazy? All of this shit... ...comes from new atheism. If you didn't have new atheism, you wouldn't even have any of this shit. It literally all comes from new atheism. A, a specific... All of this shit comes from Richard Dawkins and new atheism. My guns and we're talking about Ukraine. And we're talking about sanctions. Mm. Like, because I see sanctions... Literally all of it. It's like... I don't like what's going on in the chat to say it's a Nazi problem. There is, um, there is no more Nazi problem than you have in the United States. Of America. Shut the yeah. fuck up! That's a base chat. I didn't know his chat was that based. The American Nazis are, are a gigantic issue. Nazis everywhere are no, gigantic issue. No, I'm not saying issue. that Nazi is not an issue. I'm an anti-fascist since um, I'm 13 years old. My friends anti-fascists are murdered. Um, and I was the chat is based. My friend. So I'm what a base Nazis. chat. But, um, um, Calling out the Ukrainian Nazis. And Hassan. Is Hassan going to betray his own chat? For this woman, his own chat, he's gonna betray. Especially in my community, I don't think people think Nazis are just a problem in Ukraine. That that because this is a, a community this of. This is yours. It's nicotine gum. It's mine. If Can you want it? Well, yeah, of course. Oh, oh, that that shit's great. Um, yeah, I don't. Do you, I don't. Do they use it as no, and it's not also traffic? not a. It's also a is fucking it, bullshit excuse. Short like term. denazification is a bullshit excuse. It's unacceptable. No, yeah, I, I don't agree with that. I think that's just like, that's that's just what Vladimir Putin know? is saying to yeah. people to like justify unjustified. Yeah, that. Hassan, keep kissing her ass. Keep kissing Nazi ass, bro. Keep fucking kissing ass, bro. Zero backbone. Not even gonna defend his own chat. Not even gonna side with his own chat. His chat has been watching you, Hassan, every day for 10 hours. This random woman came into your house for two minutes, and you're already kissing her ass, selling your own chat out. Wow. Wow. Reinstituting some form of the Minsk agreements uh, and, and, and even offering some level of security assurances to Ukraine. Maybe not the same level as like Article 5 NATO, obviously, because... I think the original, uh, the the current round of peace talks have revolved around Ukraine's conditions uh, resembling Article 5 without NATO membership, basically. And obviously, that is the whole reason why, part of the reason why this conflict started to begin with. So, and the European countries are not going to say yes to that anyway, but like some kind of... Yeah, she got mad because he told her she can't flash. She's going to randomly rip off her shirt. I just have to know when it's going to happen. But she is going to do some crazy shit. I guarantee she will. It well, I'm not surprised. Earlier, that would be so much easier. No, they would never. I don't even think Ukraine will join the EU anytime soon. Cause Why? The, because the EU doesn't want it? You know, I, look, I'm Turkish. Like, well, Turkey is Muslim, so it's a little bit more different. It's never going to happen. But even with Ukraine, like, they... She's like, Muslim... Look at her eyes. Muslim. Muslim. That's my number one enemy. The only thing standing in the way of Satan. So many entrepreneurs from the Ukraine. Like, Look at how she kind of gets a little tilted when he said that. It's the number one enemy of paganism. He mentioned Muslim, which is the number one enemy of paganism. She literally has an upside down orthodox cross. She's literally a Satanist. Wealthy people from. She just thought of Kadira when he said that. We're talking not about them being poor or rich. We're talking about um, security and peace for, uh, for Europe and for the whole globe. And- security and peace for Europe and the whole globe. Even though the U.S. 
has caused more destruction and devastation than any other country around the world. There's a possibility that, like, Putin just got a uh, fucking eight months left. He's got cancer. He and, um, and, 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 and he's just fucking like, like, I need my w- Wikipedia page to fucking. I think that's a scary. That's a scary he thought as okay. well, though. Don't yeah, you think like, Russia will be severely destabilized in the aftermath of Vladimir Putin? Not that Vladimir Putin is good. But, obviously, this is more about power vacuum. Like po- 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 Putin goes. Like what? What's gonna come? And the next? Dugan's people are coming. <laughs> Y'all are talking about Putin. You don't even know what's going on in Russia. <laughs> Y'all are talking about Putin. Putin is the compromise, motherfucker. You know, yeah, Putin is the compromise. That dude's a fucking lib (laughs) in Russia. (laughs) Oh, God, just wait till what happens after Putin. Dangerous state of authoritarian regimes where they, they start to get more and more paranoid. I would say, like... I feel like we're we're in mm. an emperor has no clothes kind of situation because it's like it, it seems like he was not aware of how poorly his military was functioning. Yeah, no, he was not. Ahead. He was not aware that Ukraine is its own country and they don't want to be part of Russia. Well, and <laughs> and, and just that his his, te- his teams didn't have proper com or his 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 mm. military didn't have proper comms. They didn't have proper equipment. She's repeating they fucking didn't propaganda. Didn't have proper Total they don't bullshit. want to do it. They, yeah. they don't have motivation to do it. Total um, bullshit. More than that, they're, they're being sent without him. She's like, yeah, when Putin gets overthrown, um, we're going to have liberalism. I, I can't wait to see what happens when Putin's gone. And then when Putin's gone.
was just gonna. Why did I miss the best part? Could build a fucking alternative Russia. It's just um, Russia that Putin doesn't see. He started to see it um, really clearly in the last um, couple of years. That's why he went completely insane. He went like really, really crazy. Um, and that's what um, Navalny was doing. Was doing and uh, Pussy Riot started um, this organization. She's this getting organization. triggered because yeah, <laughs> if Hassan if Hassan starts yelling at her, and I will uh, okay. If Hassan starts yelling at her, I will give ten subs in Hassan's chat. Generation of young Russian. If Hassan starts yelling at her i'll give 10 like, subs including including 10 years old kids and i'm not encouraging 10 years old kids to go to demonstrations but um yeah we were those people who provided them info so they and the reason why 10 years old kids are going to demonstrations because they're not <laughs> um they cannot Mm, how do you say hurt it? them the police uh, oh they, they they arrest them but are, they, are, are they still they cannot start a criminal case on them are they still implementing the like uh last i heard like it's 20 years right now for for for, for 15, 15, 15 years, year yeah. maximum sentence for saying that there is a war happening and yeah. not like a special operations that's not true you want me to debunk that instantly so this woman this cia person is a fucking liar and i can prove it to you that she's a liar nadia from pussy riot is a fucking liar here are people on russian tv Calling it a war. This is the deputy chairman of the state Duma, Tolstoy, calling it a war on federal TV. Uh, uh, he called it a war on federal TV. You think they're getting 15 years? That's such fucking bullshit. On the liar. What the fuck is her name even? This. What's her name? What's her name? What is her name? On Twitter. Pussy Riot? What's the Twitter handle? This is it? No, it's not. Why would you say that? Hurry, guys. Hurry the fuck up. Jesus, was that so hard? There you go. Yeah. What are they saying over here? They're like... They're just... They're... They're going off. Yeah. There, there's a lot of people that are normally... Are there's they, a lot of people that are here that normally wouldn't be Are they mad or like... Unwell. They're unwell. They're unwell. Chad, 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 is a, corny. Chad as a collective is gonna is just never try to make do sense we, of it. Do we, acknowledge it. do we acknowledge them? I usually I do. I, I side with chat. I side with the chat. I'm with the chat. I promise you, it's not a good thing to do. I what? mean, honestly, like, uh, especially to Putin's bots, like, these guys are really nice, so you can... You can yeah, they, I... She's calling Hassan's loyal audience Putin bots. Hassan, defend your fucking chatters, bro. She's calling them Putin bots. She just doubted their humanity. Yeah, no, I... I ignore chat, guys. I ignore chat. Oh, yeah, no, chat. ignore chat. chat. I'm going to make a new tweet. I'm going to make a tweet. Hassan reads all my tweets, so I know he reads them. I can't believe Hassan 
allow this CIA agent to insult his own chat and disrespect them, calling them Putin bots. He sold out his own. That's what I'm going to say. Because legalization then opens up like an additional uh, exploitative component. Because like once you, you legalize mean? it, how do you mean? Like government-operated brothels are uh, a point of controversy in a lot of uh, European countries where sex workers prefer, where sex workers in America at the very least prefer uh, decriminalization. Which uh, you know, Jesus, yeah, let the Johns get away with it. Oh, God, this is the worst thing. Add that component to it. Once there needs to be a tanky revolution in Hassan's, ch in Hassan's uh, community where all the based tankies overthrow the prostitution defenders and they also overthrow all of the fucking CIA lip shit stuff. I'm just uh, going to be like really we'll transparent. Like, I, I'm not a politician exactly. I'm an artist who makes comments on political stuff. And um, I think I, I'm not ready right now to come up with like a political bill about it. You don't have to. Like, I, I, I thought like, <laughs> well, because you do it. So I thought like maybe you had uh, opinions on it, but we don't have to talk about no, that. No, but I mean, like uh, things like OnlyFans are not really illegal. So I'm fine with that. I'm definitely think that uh, sex works should uh, be much more respected. Because it's um, one of the oldest professions, yeah. and um, yeah, I make them. How like, disgusting! Thirty, I think, I, I, I think thirty percent of women in the industrial revolution were engaging in sex work. It's like, um, you know, you mean the women who were uprooted from their land and completely destitute on the streets, with absolutely fucking nothing, doing it out of desperation to feed their fucking kids. And you're saying that's some respectable profession we should uphold. And it's, what are you talking about? What a disgusting thing to say. I, um, and actually spoke with a guy who is majority holder of OnlyFans. And I was like, what actually happened with that? Um, a year ago, they... I really... About to ban porn on OnlyFans. And like most of, uh, most of creators, I mean, like, mo not most, okay, like a lot of creators on the fence are actually making porn. And that's how on the fans blew up. Um, yeah, chat doesn't like her. Chat does not like her. <laughs> Let me see what they're saying. I don't know. Ban porn, um, in, like within the next three days. And then it was like, like a large, um, <laughs> Backlash. Like the backlash yeah and then yeah. they decided to take it back and then they could want to ask the guy like what actually happened um he um i mean like then he didn't give me any more than um uh, was in their public answer that they wanted to get more money they want to get more investments and grow grow larger but banks like corporate america is like pretty pertinent still so like it's like definitely much more difficult to raise capital when you um is engaged somehow in sex work yeah. So do, so like so um same thing goes about Web three. I just <laughs> I just got rejected my bank account being opened because I um not my personal but uh, C Corp who tried to open for um our operations. Um they, they rejected us because we are involved in Web three. <laughs> Wait, you're saying that they didn't want to open up a bank account for your C Corp because you have a Web three business yeah, exactly. presence? Mm, yeah, yeah. So weird. Is is more? It's more so. It's less about sex work, but more about Web three. No, no, no. Um, and so the specific uh, the bank account was specifically for Unicorn DAO. It's a DAO that we formed to raise money and then uh, spend this money on uh, female plus LGBTQ plus people um, artworks. Um, so yeah, it's just specific collectors DAO, and um, so that's not connected with sex work. She's racist. She's race. She's Islamophobic, Russophobic, racist, Western chauvinist woman. Mm, they didn't want to open because um, a large part of our racist woman. She's racist. She's racist, Western chauvinist woman. You have less violence against women. Because she's about to make a mistake. 
There's, you're mm -hmm. saying there's less violence against women during legal sex work? <laughs> yeah, Bro, Hassan, it's not hard. Just tell her to cover up. I'm even getting scared. Even I'm getting scared that she's going to be like, ah, I just slipped. Sorry. <laughs> what an accident. Just tell her to cover up. Holy shit. Now that's sexist. No, it's not sexist. This is our job. You can't even, you know what I mean? I'm getting worried and nervous because she doesn't care about TOS like me and Hassan care about TOS. She don't even care. She's even probably trying to get him banned, you know? <laughs> Did he just make it in front of us? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, you know what? <laughs> I actually am gonna do um, that. Like... <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, listen, 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 let's... Okay. That was... We okay. <laughs> That's what happens when Russians are not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, we on. are gonna steal your elections <laughs> and spill the drinks. <laughs> oh, is, it, is it tavern music back? Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk for a second about Finally, that? Finally, fucking thank God, the tavern music back. Um, I yeah. It was, it was really funny when um, um Trump was elected. People were saying that no free clout. No free cloud. I mean, everything in the world happens because of Russians. That's no. Do you do you think there's ah, a? Do you no, think that okay, was? I do. I, 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 do you think Russian interference is the reason why Trump won? I I, I do think there's. Be gone, Shaitan. Be gone, Shaitan. Be gone, Shaitan. CIA, Shaitan, be gone. I mean, there was, no? but like, no, it's so marginal. The real problems are like James Comey himself personally had a way bigger impact than than. What liberals uh, that desperately wanted to push the responsibility music. away from uh, from their own faults to Russia or Russian intervention? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Like, and, and, and like from my point of view, influence of Russia was super marginal. Um, yeah, and um, it was like kind of funny for me uh, how the New York Times and like pretty much all the um, mainstream media in the United States were trying to blame Russia when. I mean, particularly they were ones to blame. Explain to people here that you're not a fan of Vladimir Putin as well, obviously, you know. I'm, I'm not. Actually, it was blowing up minds of like, so many people. Like, when Financial Please. Times and, like, New York Times would ask me, like, so, why do you think uh, Trump has won? It Was it before, because of Russian interference? I was like, fuck no. <laughs> and, like, they stopped interviewing me ever since. I mean, like, they... They came back to me, but like, it took three years for them to actually process. <laughs> like Tris. <laughs> yeah, no, they they have a narrative, and that narrative was great for the Democratic Party because then it it takes away the responsibility from the Democratic Party, who, which ran a horrible campaign, put Hillary it's Clinton in. Yeah. yeah, and then and then it's an easy narrative because it goes back to like Cold War narratives. Russia is bad. Russia is our enemy. Russia is the foreign adversary. And and that way, you know, let's not focus on our faults, our failures, and let's just simply focus on. Yes, the possibility of famine is huge right now. It's actually fucking huge. And and all this shit, and it's like that's so stupid. The wealthiest nation on the fucking planet. Ridiculous to make this assessment. Even then, it would be our. Even if Russia had the capabilities of like manipulating American minds somehow with these magical powers, okay. Uh, even then, that's a gigantic flaw in the American security apparatus if they Cringe chat is praising her now. The chat's turning cringe. Chat's turning cringe. Uh, um, F FSB, which is like, you know, if you don't know, yeah. it's like the same thing as um, CIA and stuff like that here. Uh, um, Three million dollar house in West Hollywood. Three million dollar house in West Hollywood. And, and then he recovered. He called. Um, he called uh, one of the guys who tried to murder him, and uh, he said, "Oh, I'm a director of FSB. Um, can you explain me why didn't he murder Navalny? Like, what happened?" And they gave him the whole rundown. Like in 20 minutes, they were explaining him details of the operation, and he obviously recorded it and put it on YouTube. They're idiots. They cannot. They, they're not in control at all. <laughs> I, f I feel like the issue is we like don't have. A an Illuminati, like, 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 it's like, like. That's an issue. <laughs> Grimes, you're so smart. You're so smart, Grimes. It's like, oh, I'm such an asshole.
some like hidden seat of power, like uh, like there's there's machinations and like someone's in control. I would actually feel more comfortable if there was like some like demonic, <laughs> like. Um, Go what? on. No, I was literally trying can, can, to, to build a Illuminati commune just no, like a week no, ago. It, <laughs> if someone had fucking control, I would I would be way more comfortable. But like, what it what it feels like is a, is a, is that no one has control. I have. Yeah, it's so smart. There are people with uh, you know united interests. Uh, they have a lot of power. I have a magic button. It's right. like you you press the button and like you gain the control. You do. Uh huh. Where's the button? Where, where's I just up? found where's this the... in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of fucked up that you haven't pressed it yet, but... <laughs> yeah, why aren't you pressing the button? I don't think there's, a, I don't think there's an Illuminati per se, because I, I think that's like... I've, I've been to your house, I don't know I've seen the button. Uh, it's in the garage. It's like actually um, a, a, a sacred territory. And, and, okay, okay. Well, should we go Next like, time. We, like, we, we can go after the performance. Should, should we go there now? Um, we can go now, but... Now would be a great time. What's up? Do you have a performance tonight? Huh? Do you have a performance tonight? Yeah, and it's at um, 11 p.m. Um, you can get info on uh, Pussy Red Twitter. What is it? What kind of performance? Music? It's a DJ set. It's a pre-recorded DJ set. I run around and. Isn't it, isn't her music? Isn't Pussy Riot's music where they just they just go there like <laughs> they just fucking flail their arms around and fucking screech like? Isn't that what they do? Something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, listen, to each their own. You know, I'm not going to kink shame, but like I'm kink shaming a little bit. Uh, Ooh. What? <laughs> no, I'm interesting. I'm kidding. Interesting. I'm, interesting. I'm kidding. I'm Just kidding. Chill. Like as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. Which, I mean, it literally does. But as long as the <laughs> yeah. hurt, as long as the hurt is consensual, then it's good. You know, fine by me. Um, okay. Terrifying though. I, I like, I hate pain. Okay. Uh, me too. That's why I dominate. <laughs> See, okay, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. Like I, <laughs> guys, it's kind of funny because this is the last political community on Twitch. <laughs> All of DGG just got wiped. <laughs> this is the last one. Um. All right. So you, you what? Where is that? What is that? Like a DJ said, is it a club? Or what are you doing? It's a super chief gallery. The minute they started attacking me, they're just done. Holy shit. Who must go? This conversation. It is. It is. It. It's it calming. It's calming. It's, it's nice. Are you good? It's, it's relaxing. Okay. I mean, the, the talking in the silence is weird. I, I mean, I do it all the time. Okay. EGG made me forget that. This is actually what's mainstream. DGG was never mainstream. They were always fucking bitter. <laughs> they were always, oh my god, I never used to, I was, I was not paying attention to the bigger picture. This was always what was mainstream. All those DGG people, that was like, those were just like the rebels and misfits of political Twitch. <laughs> oh, they're gone now. Depends on yeah, League of Legends nerds. We're getting a tattoo, maybe. I have a tattoo machine. I, I, I know some great artists. I'm definitely right not letting right you tattoo me. <laughs> I feel like. Is it like part of your kink shame strategy? Or we, or we no, 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 no. I wasn't. That wasn't. That, I was not kink shaming you. I was just saying. I don't know. I don't know what your skills are with the fucking needle. You know what I'm saying? We can stay in post. Skills are nothing. Ideas, everything. Yeah. Okay. Well. I've tattooed a lot of people to great effect, so. I've seen both of you guys spill half a bottle of champagne <laughs> and White Claw in the past hour. I am not letting you guys touch my body with a fucking poker, okay? So you want to know why I feel bad for Hassan, though? This woman here that I have covered, she would actually love Destiny and Destiny's chat way more than Hassan. She, that's, that's what you don't get. Like, Hassan is the one <laughs> who's being too based for his own career. It would be, she is like, why, why is it that the biggest political streamer on Twitch contradicts Reddit? 
Isn't that weird? The biggest one on Twitch contradicts Reddit. Which... Oh, Hassan has to watch his throne. Because they're coming for that throne. Holy shit. Imagine if, like, a Destiny lib replaced Hassan. That might actually happen. Watching. That'll be all for today. I'm going to run the last three-minute ad break here. Um... Ad break? Yeah. Who are your advertisers? You, you're an ad-based situation? No, I don't have... What the fuck? I don't have advertisers, but huh. I have a contract with Twitch, so I have to run ads. They forced me to run ads uh, at the... Is this... With this, an ad density. This compromises the in integrity of the situation. Well, I don't have any control or say over who's running the ads. It's just inventory space well, that what, they are pushing. Are, what, what's the, what are the ads coming from? I have no idea. I don't know. Go I don't brand. know what the fuck it is. Okay. Probably He's fucking drunk. <laughs> promote my album <laughs> right now <laughs> I, I originally came here i just feel like somebody's gonna be like i'm drunk and they're gonna rip off their shirt or some shit <laughs> oh my god fuck okay sorry then okay my manager's people well like, just listen to grimes she's um, and, and she's listen, to, listen to pussy riot amazing and, and listen to <laughs> hassan who's i'm not sure you're mentally well <laughs> Okay. This, uh, this doesn't seem good for your brain. I, I, I think I'm all right. Brain. It's seven hours a day, eight hours a day on here. Yeah, no, this and, stuff, this and stuff. Like, this is not healthy. I, I like it. I enjoy it. This is literally what I prefer to do. I could do whatever the fuck I want. I could just stop streaming for Should we a get year. hot pot after this? I mean, I'm down. I like hot Should pot. Should we just like do something fun after this that's relaxing and not mm -hmm. in the public? Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. do that. Um, Yeah. Uh, but regardless, I, uh, this is, this is, you know, I, I like doing it. So that's why uh, I do it. It's great. I have, I have enough freedom. I have enough financial security right now to like not do this if I didn't want to, but I enjoy it. Shit on a song. Cause you can't bring a hot girl on stream. You're right. I would never bring your mom on stream. I'm yeah. That's just off stream. That's not good enough to be on stream. Not at all. X, Y, Z. Okay. All right. Well, okay, let's run the outro music. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if Captain Ahab is in the chat. Somebody, the only reason I'd ever bring your mom on stream is if somebody's looking for Moby Dick. Uh huh. Anyway, all right. Raid well. me. Raid me. What the fuck? All the chatter's trickling. <laughs> if Hassan was actually funny, he would raid me, and it would be like the Nadia would see. Oh, what stream are you raiding? <laughs> and she'd come, and it says Putin is good. <laughs> oh god. Is this an ad or is this a raid? What is this? Is this an ad or is this a raid? Hassan is streaming. Hassan is streaming. Hassan does outros? Let me sing an outro. How do you sign up to be an outro for Hassan's uh, stream? I'll sing an outro. Ready? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And she's a jolly good fellow. 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 Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And a man in a man on the rain. Now I'm a man on a thing. 
Oh, fuck. Come on, man. Give me the outro song. The fuck? This guy? The guy who fucking sucks at music? That's who gets rated. That's fucking disgusting. That's legitimately disgusting. <clears throat> Actually disgusting. Instead of rating me. Instead of rating me. Actually sickening. Alright guys. Let's get into our actual stream. Okay. Because we do have an actual stream. We're going to get to. And. We are going to begin covering some of yesterday's news. Uh, and then we're going to get into today's. Okay. First order of business. I'm just going to show you a pick that goes hard. Okay. I'm going to go pee. And then we're going to get into it. Okay. I'm going to go pee. Let me go pee. Let me go take a piss. Okay. Let me go take a urination. Okay.
Hey, what's up, guys? I gotta stop being schizophrenic. I'm sorry. All right. Anyway. All right. Um. Should I cover the Disney thing or is that a little too spicy? So apparently there's a new bill being passed in Florida. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently in this bill, there it's called the Parental Rights Act. And they're basically saying, do not talk about any sexual related topics from kindergarten to third grade. And Disney spoke out against it. And said that they're going to work to fight against this bill in Florida. You got to ask, why is, you know, I'm going to show you the, the thing. I'll show it to you later. You got to cover this Russia shit first. But it's a little fucking weird. This one has arguments for both sides. Don't go crazy. All right, what's the other side's argument? What is the other side's argument? Tell me. Don't assume I'm brainwashed. Just tell me the other side. I don't know what the other side is. I haven't seen it. You know, tell me what it is. What could be the other side for that? Why do children need to be taught about sexuality? In kindergarten? Really? Disney was the one pushing the bill at first. So let me see. Tariq Nasheed has got a link to it. Let's check out Tariq's link. I'm going to tell you all what. Holy fuck. So let me tell you actually a little bit about this movie, Turning Red, okay? So Disney announced they're focusing more on sexual identity of their characters for children. Um, the new Disney animation with my kids, Turning Red, and I noticed the symbol. So let me tell you about the movie, Turning Red, okay? I've seen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't seen the movie. But everyone who's seen it is reporting on this movie, Turning Red. The Disney movie. It's called Turning Red. Okay? And Turning Red is about puberty. Right? When this young girl comes of age, she suddenly starts... When she gets too emotional, she turns into a panda. A red panda. Right? And then in the movie, get this. Apparently, I don't know if this is made up. This is what I heard. I heard in the movie... She starts an online thing called Only Pans, where she starts selling pictures of her panda. And she has people line up in the bathroom to see her panda. She, all the kids in school are lining up at the bathroom to see her panda. And it's like, apparently it's like really weird and sexualized. And the panda is clearly referring to sexuality. It's clearly referring to puberty and sexuality, right? Um, and the panda represents, and the parents, the mom is like, no, don't show your panda in public. And the mom is like, oh, you can't go out wearing that. Like, cause she has like a panda tail or some shit. And then the mom is like, you can't go out wearing that. So, um... You know, this panda represents puberty, right? And then at the end of the film, it's f shown that secretly the mom also has a panda that she turns into sometimes. And that's how, like, the movie's basically about the mother willing to let go and allow her daughter to freely express her panda. 
The only problem is that the, it's like an elementary school student, right? So this is a Disney film. Pretty fucking disgusting, isn't it? Pretty fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's a Mr. Girl Disney film. Okay. Um. Yeah. Pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up, huh? It's just art. There's no harm in it. It's just art. The only thing I don't believe it, they will ban any mansion of homosexual people. Hold on. That's a lie. The bill does not contain any language about homosexuality or gay anything. Nothing like that. It just says no sex in general topics for kindergartners to third grade. She's 13, not 5. Oh, that makes it better. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> look at this chatter. She's 13 in the movie, not 5. Oh! That makes it way better. <laughs> that makes it way better. My bad. My bad. So she starts in only pans. By the way, is the only pans thing real? Please tell me that part of the movie is not real. I literally heard in the movie she sets up something called an OnlyPans where she sells her panda online. Pictures of her panda. It's not real? Okay. You don't know. You don't know these days. Okay? But she did have people line up in the bathroom to see her panda, didn't she? Because I saw the scene. They linked the pictures of the scene. On Twitter. So I saw that one. Why am I talking about a movie I never watched? Because this movie clearly... The panda clearly stands for puberty. Like, we all know that. It's very clear. It's very clear that the panda means puberty and sexual self-discovery. It's very clear the panda means sexual self-discovery. Very fucking clear. It's supposed to be about periods. Then why is she selling her period in the bathroom when the whole school is lining up? It's sexual self-discovery and puberty. Sexual self-discovery and puberty. That's what the movie's about. Okay? She do they do have the kids line up in the bathroom. That happened. Apparently, there's also a part where she's hiding under the bed, thinking about boys, drawing them more and more intensely, and becoming more and more red in the process. Yeah, so y'all don't y'all don't know what this is about. Y'all don't know what that they're trying to say. This is the movie that your children are watching in the movie theater. Hell no, I'm moving to Afghanistan. Hell no, if I'm going to let my kids ever watch a movie like that. Hell no, if I'm ever going to let raise kids in this country. Hell no, if Nadia voiced the panda. Now you're fucking lying. Nadia voiced the panda, really? This is the movie. They're, they're, your children are watching these movies. This is the movies the young people of this day are watching. Hell no. If I ever raise my kids in this country, let them watch a movie like that. Hell no. If I'll ever raise my kids in this country. Think you're better off in Iran? Hell yeah. My kids would be better off being raised in Iran. Hell yeah. Only pans? A Disney movie with only pans? Hell no, I'm not raising kids in this country. Hell no, I'm not raising kids in this country. Hell no, I'm not raising kids in this country. I'll move to Afghanistan. Anything but this shit. 
Hey, teaching this shit to children. The panda. Oh, come see my panda in the bathroom. Hell no. Nah. To try and secret subliminal messages, mental engineering, spiritual warfare, satanic spiritual warfare and subversion of our youth and our children. Hell no, nah, if I let my kids ever near that shit. Yeah, why teach this to children? And now you're asking, oh, why is Disney against the bill of protecting parental rights? I'll tell you why they're against it, because Disney's the number one groomer corporation. Yeah. Disney is the number one groomer corporation. The teacher mentions a detail about their life and exposes that they're No, you're wrong, Jimmy. What the hell are you talking about, Jimmy? The bill doesn't say anything about being gay. It doesn't mention anything about being gay. You're wrong. It just says you can't teach sexuality to kindergartners and third graders. What the hell? And you're against that? And you're against that, Jin Jimmy? Sexuality or gender identity? Bruh! Kindergarten? Kindergarten? Y'all really need to be talking about this to five-year-olds? In school? Holy shit! You know, a lot of you lefties have this idea that they're like, No, the right wing is... They're, they're making a big deal over this, but in reality, schools are wholesome chungus. You don't know shit about the real world. You don't know shit about the real world. Of course, these creepy, fucked up teachers will take advantage. You don't think that these people are taking advantage? They are. Holy shit. And Disney was founded by a Nazi. It's a Nazi company, and they're going back to their Nazi roots. Sex scene in a Pixar movie? No, it's same sex scene edit. So Pixar, they made a movie about Buzz Lightyear and they edited in a scene of a same sex scene. Just open the door for LGBTQA representation. But for children? For children? Why is that gotta be for children? But why does it have to be for children? That's a kid's movie. Oh, shit. Are we allowed to say leave the kids alone these days? Are we allowed to say leave the kids alone in 2022? Can we please leave the kids out of this shit? Can we please not make kids movies about sexuality? Damn. At least they learn in school. And if they are perverse in school, we have a bigger issue. Bruh. Children don't need to be confused at a young age. They don't need to be confused at a young age. Damn, they're coming after those kids, huh? They're coming after your kids. They're coming after your kids. They're coming after your kids. It wasn't enough to come after you. They have to come after your kids too.
They don't even know the alphabet yet in kindergarten. But now they got to learn a new alphabet? They don't even know the, the real alphabet in kindergarten. They're still singing the alphabet. But now you're teaching them another alphabet? Damn. Can I tell y'all when I was learning as a kid? Am I allowed to say this? So when I was a kid... Uh, I was, what uh, there was like, I was a kid and I was, I was saying, what is G A Y? I don't know if I'm allowed to, is it a bad word? I said, what does that mean? What is that? And then my older cousin said, it basically means when you're in love with yourself. And they're like, for example, Squidward is G A Y because he's in love with himself. And I said, oh, okay. And for the longest time, I thought that's what it meant. For the longest time, I thought that's what it meant. For the longest time, that's what I thought it, it meant. And I said, okay, Squidward. Perfect example. Anyway, let's get into the Ukraine Russia news. Let's get into the news about what's going on in Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Oh God, Reddit. Reddit. R slash Ukraine. Fuck. Our lives are fucked. R slash Ukraine doesn't even have a million members. That's actually funny. It's actually hilarious. This incredible fucking propaganda. All right. There's a business down the road for me flying an Azov flag. Zizek versus what? I'll react to that right now. Versus Vivek? We have so much news to cover, holy fuck. We have so much to fucking cover. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, my name is Jeremy Cohen. And Nobody I'll gives a shit. Jacobin Soy Magazine. You know what? I'm gonna type soy. I'll be moderating this very special episode of The Jacobin Show today. Um, we are privileged, honored to have with us two of the left's most important thinkers um, to speak uh, on the important question of ideology and culture and what role these things play in... This is the tragedy 
of male pattern baldness. Because this guy would not even look bad if he had a hairline. He would look way better with hair. Way better. Let me just see. Yeah, oh my god, that's so sad. The structure of capitalism and working class organizing. That's so sad. And in left-wing politics today. So first of all, I'm honored to introduce uh, Slavoj Žižek. Um, he's a philosopher. That's so sad. This dude would actually look way better with hair. Probably people know him, but I'll say um, he's a philosopher and critic whose work has covered everything from continental philosophy to psychoanalysis to Marxism. Um, he's published over 50 books from Thank his Thank you, Alex. Uh, first, The Sublime Object of Ideology, which meant a lot to me in college uh, when it helped cure me of postmodernism, I used to say. Um, and uh, two, I think, three recent volumes on the pandemic. Um, and he's also been the subject of a number of films. Uh, Zizek also holds many titles at many universities, including the University of Lublin. I will look like him in five years. Hell no. They're going to cure baldness by then. Yana, the University of Or I'll get a hair transplant. London, Kyunghee University, and New York University. Um, second of all, we're joined by Vivek Chibber, um, actually really the guest of honor today um, in celebration for his new book, The Class Matrix. This guy's a dumbass. Uh, social theory after the cultural turn, um, which we'll be discussing. Um, Vivek is the editor of Catalyst Journal and professor of sociology at New York University. Um, oh he's the God. author of a number of books, including Locked in Place on uh, and Oh, my God. And uh, post-colonial theory and the specter of capital. Uh, oh my god! Um, and again, today we'll be talking about his new work, which uh, asks us to shut the fuck up. When they pursue their politics or their economic uh, goals, they are basically guided by what's called their interests. So, at the heart of materialism, social materialism, is a doctrine that social action is governed by people's material interests. So in the, it, the, the gamut of Marxist history, the, the assumption uh, was that when you pose a uh, question like, how does... Uh, I mean, and so on, uh, it's not simply that they didn't see what you, Vivek, were saying about. In their... Uh, okay, nobody gives a fuck. What a, what a bunch of time-wasting buffoons. What a bunch of time-wasting buffoons. It's not the nerds, they say. But the nerds, shut up, man. It's fucking, that shit just gets old. That shit just gets old. Shit just gets old, you know? Give it a rest. All right. Lavrov, the West has been the world's dominant player for over 500 years now, but it's a different era. Forming of mo Hold on, look at this dumbass. Hold on, hold on. Look at this dumb fuck. Yeah, if you actually Please. watch something... Thank you, Jenar. You might have to learn something. Fuck that. You're talking to a guy who has listened to every one of Zizek's online available lectures up to late 2017, including the Birkbeck University recorded audio lectures that were posted online. You're talking to someone who read almost all of Zizek's books. You're talking to someone who has studied Zizek more than the fucking International Journal of Zizek Studies so-called scholars and experts like that one fucking guy, Adrian Johnson, who doesn't even understand Zizek. You're talking to somebody who knows way fucking more about Zizek's own ideas than Zizek himself. Fuck you, bitch. If anyone has a right to call Zizek out on his bullshit, it's me. Because I understand his fucking philosophy better than he does.
forming a multipolar international order is now here. Global economic development hubs pursuing a nationally oriented policy have risen and they do not want to accept neoliberal values imposed by the West. Hassan, what's your issue with this, Hassan? Yo, Hassan, what's your problem? What, I thought you're against neoliberalism. You always talk about it, Hassan. I thought you're against neoliberalism. You always talk about how you're against neoliberalism. What's the problem? What exactly is the problem? We should ban the colors blue and yellow. Do you agree with Kantbath about this hard-hitting issue? Damn. I don't know. I said the same shit. I said the same shit. I pointed this out first. I said the same shit, bruh. She's just very, she's very, she's very like, She's very vertitious. No, that sounds disgusting. She's very... Just milk and honey vibes. The land of milk and honey. That's all I'll say. She's got that mama bear energy. She's just the mama bear of milk and honey. <laughs> Give me one sec. Give me one sec. <clears throat> yeah. All right. And other funny news. All right. First, we got to get past that. And then we saw this. A new reality is taking shape. Unipolar order is receding into the past, and a multipolar order is being born. No more second-rate players. All nations will be equal and sovereign. Uh, uh. So this is the hilarious interaction. AOC flexes her biceps. Huh. Huh. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez.
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, no way Vosh is unbanned from Twitch. I knew that was a fucking joke. An April Fool's joke. It's not! No! It's not an April Fool's joke. He's back! Vosh is back. Fuck! Fuck! Azalea Banks came out in support of Putin? No fucking way. That's so based. She did come out in support of Putin? Let me see. With that said, this is so politically red, but I really fucking love Putin. Ukraine should join Rhea Sassar. I'm not reading. A, how do you expect anyone to read all that? We all forget that China has way more experience. Yeah, I'm not reading all that shit, but based. Based. Since when has she become all these people just based? I like Azalea Banks. Is she the troll who voted for Trump? Who's the mean one who voted for Trump and she dissed Grimes? Who's the rapper who uh, dissed Grimes? That's her? That's Azalea Banks. I like Azalea Banks. I always liked her. Didn't she sacrifice a chicken to hurt somebody? I like her. She's just very bitter, though. She gives off very bitter energy. Which I can't support. But I like her. She does witchcraft. All right. All those carbs are really starting to catch up to me. It's all right. We're going to soldier through. All right. A AOC. And then Crystal Ball out here, who is, by the way, currently with Kyle Kulinski. Here's the guy who organized the union drive talking about how you left them high and dry. These are your constituents, and you wouldn't be bothered to show up until they're on the cusp of victory. The warehouse isn't in my district, and maybe you should look at a map before claiming so. One scheduling conflict aside, we request an oversight investigation to Amazon. Met with Amazon. <laughs> Not one member of the squad showed up. They ghosted Chris, and this wasn't just another event. It was the most substantial worker-led organizing effort for one of the most powerful companies in the world. They all had excuses for how many months of this organizing drive. So what exactly is the insinuation here? 
that we are all secretly in a tank for Amazon, that we're sellouts despite leading congressional investigations to Amazon, taking a huge blowback to call out the scam, a headquarters to deal, meeting with workers in our district warehouses? No, it just means you're an establishment shill and lazy. Yeah. If AOC is publicly pissed about Crystal Ball's reasonable comments, imagine how pissed she gets in private reacting to our legitimate critiques of her selling out. Because I know for a fact that AOC watched the debate between Sam Cedar and Jackson Hinkle. I know for a fact AOC knows about Jackson Hinkle. AOC does know about Jackson. She does, objectively. AOC knows about Jackson. One thousand percent. Of course, everyone knows about Jackson. Everyone. You know a lot. Most people know about me. Okay? Most people know about me. You don't think they know about Jackson? Hell yeah, they know about Jackson. Biden probably knows about me. Biden probably watches my stream. Biden probably watches my stream. Okay? Dylan Burns is scamming donators. He's not even going. <laughs> what? Is he going to do a Zelensky green screen? I'm right here in the middle of Kiev with Zelensky. He's going to Poland. Imagine paying for a streamer to go to Poland. Not even going to Ukraine. You're just going to Poland. That's like me going to Lebanon for the Syria conflict. Ah, I'm going to cover the Syria conflict by going to fucking Dubai. I'm going to cover the Syria conflict by going to Dubai. Yeah, let me just go to Poland. For what? Go to Poland for what? Nah, I'm just going to go to Poland. Why? Why well, is that? Just because. Scam. What a scam. What a shameless, unspeakable scam. All right. So I'm going to cover an article by Pravda. Now, this is their opinion. This is their side of the story. And this is what they're saying about the maternity hospital that was allegedly bombed by Russia. Now, am I agreeing with this? Of course not. I'm just presenting you what they're saying. Okay? So this is what they're saying. The Ukrainian side accused Russia of a targeted attack on the maternity hospital in Mariupol. The Russian side claimed that it was the fighters of Azov Battalion who had occupied the building and staged the provocation. Do sub donal goals... No, I, I'm not going to. You want to know why? When I did a, a sub goal, I barely got any subs. If I just don't do a goal, it's just better. You know, it's just better. Just let things flow naturally. Instead of having goals, the goal should be whatever the community wants. If the community wants me to stay, you know, then I, it's simple. The photos of Mariana Vyshemskaya in the ruined maternity hospital were publicized all over the world. But in the above-mentioned video, Mariana Vyshemskaya said the following, I was admitted to this maternity hospital on March 6th because there was nowhere else to go. The military didn't help in any way. And asked for food. They, they were told the food was for pregnant women, but they took our food anyway and said that we would make some more. We heard a shell exploding. Then we heard another shell. I was a bit hurt by the shattered glass. 
but it was insignificant. We discussed whether this was an airstrike by Russia. They said that there was no air raid. There was no air raid. No one heard it at all, even those who were out on the street. Huh. This is her story. Now, is this Russian propaganda? Is this Russia lying? Who knows? Russian Foreign Ministry cracks down on Chanel for its Nazi stance. Maria Zakharona, an official representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry, responds to reports about the decision of Chanel stores to ban selling products to Russian citizens. In her post on Telegram, she recalled the founder of the brand, was an agent of the Third Reich during the Second World War. Chanel, Zakharova wrote, had close ties with officers of the occupation government of France. Coco Chanel participated in attempts to organize secret negotiations between Germany and Britain. She sold, by attracting Nazis, she tried to regain the rights to the profits from perfume sales. We just opened a closet from which 80-year-old skeletons had not been decayed or falling out. Chanel supported Nazism. They're going back to square one, supporting it once again in this dark chapter of history. So there's going to be two. I'm going to show you this one and then the Reuters one. So many of you heard about that recent depot attack that is conveniently going on amidst Ukraine-Russia negotiations for a ceasefire. And it appears there has been an attack on the Belgorod oil depot. The Belgorod oil depot. However, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine did not confirm or deny. We will neither confirm nor deny. That's a little weird. It's, it's weird to neither confirm nor deny. Okay. Um, the attack on Belgorod. Ukraine, now in, in, in Reuters, right? Apparently, Ukraine denies hitting the depot altogether in the Reuters article. Talks to stop fighting in Ukraine on Friday as another desperate attempt to rescue civilians from the encircled city of Mariupol failed and the Kremlin accused Ukrainians of launching a helicopter attack on a fuel depot on Russian soil. Ukraine denied responsibility for the fiery blast, but if Moscow's claim is confirmed, it would be the first known attack in which Russian Ukrainian aircraft penetrated Russian airspace. So it's a little weird that this would happen amidst negotiations. Someone has a vested interest in keeping this conflict going. Whoever's responsible for this attack wants the conflict to keep going. For some reason and has a vested interest in keeping it going guys can i ratio gretchen whitmer what if i quote tweet gretchen whitmer and ratio her she only has 400 likes should i ratio her Should I ratio Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan? <laughs> oh, I kind of feel like you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't want, I live in this state. I, I'm scared of her. Uh. 
No, she's gonna like be victim Andy. She's gonna be like, oh my god, I was ratioed in a plot to kidnap me. I was... I'm not gonna do that shit. Worth not worth the trouble. It is literally not worth the trouble. It's just not worth the fucking trouble. Literally not. The FBI tried to kidnap me. <laughs> I can't believe the FBI tried to kidnap me. All right. So this is a very mysterious provocation that happened. And the motivations for it are still unclear. Why would someone do this is the fucking question that's got to be on all of our minds. Now, Russia's uh, withdrawing, apparently, its ground forces from areas around Kiev, saying it's going to reduce military activity near the capital. To promote trust at the bargaining table. People are interpreting this as Russia retreating and Russia's losing and Ukraine's pushing them back. Well, Russia never even had as its goal to take over Kiev. I wasn't even clear what its goals were, but they reiterated that everything they were doing outside of the Donbass was to neutralize military infrastructure and prevent the Ukrainian military forces from replenishing themselves in the Donbass. And that's what the entire operation was about. You know, most people don't know that the bulk of the operation's actual fighting is happening in the Donbass. Most of this is about the Donbass, but you'll see the media is only going to fucking focus on what's going on in some fucking neighborhood around Kiev or somewhere, right? They're going to only focus on that because conflict has been going on in the Donbass for eight years. So it's not new, right? So the, the bulk of the operation is Donbass, right? The media doesn't care about that because that's a region of Ukraine where fighting has been ongoing since forever, right? 
But when, when, when there's like an explosion in Kiev somewhere or when Russian troops are in some neighborhood in Kiev, something like that, it, it, all of a sudden that's going to be really blown up and exaggerated because it's never happened before, right? So this is also something we forgot to cover last time, which is really important. According to the IMF, Russian sanctions can weaken the dollar. The IMF's first deputy meeting, Jita, said the sanctions imposed on Russia threatened to chip away at dollar dominance. She told Financial Times that this can lead to more fragmented monetary system. So even they're admitting it now? Dollar would remain the major global currency, even in that landscape, but fragmentation at a smaller level is quite possible. And this is Coke, by the way, because no, it fucking wouldn't. By no means would the dollar remain the major global currency in that landscape. Absolutely not. That's just the complete... That's just the most, like, that's the most incredible copium. I, I can't even come up with cope at that level. So, you're going to ask Kaz, what are you going to do about that? What am I going to do about that? I'm going to take a sip of Gatorade. I need those electrolytes. Amirio 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 Ah, uh, Mirio. Ah, uh, Mirio. Ah, uh, Mirio. Ah, uh, Mirio. Okay, guys. The IMF is even admitting that the sanctions are going to weaken the U.S. dollar. And this is the main article I want to cover before we get into more visually oriented news. And by the way, we are going to end up covering Caleb Maupin on Jimmy Dore, right? But so remember if you guys yesterday we were talking about the potential divisions within the Russian state and within the Russian government. Well, actually, it turns out that we may have over-exaggerated those divisions because according to this perspective, don't fall for fake news. The Russian deep state is united like never before. Huh, I don't know why. 
this is going to be said because there's apparently contradictory uh, statements that are coming out from different sectors of the Russian government. But let's hear this perspective out and see what they have to say. So what they're saying is that Russia just flipped the strategic tables on the West, which is why its opponents are ramping up their fake news. They can't allow the public to acknowledge the fact the same special operation that they provoked Russia into initiating unleashed multiple unintended consequences that have accelerated the decline of U.S. unipolar hegemony. The U.S.-led Western mainstream media has been aggressively pushing for fake news narrative that Russia's permanent military intelligence and diplomatic bureaucracies, a.k.a. the deep state, are divided over the country's ongoing special military operation in Ukraine, even going so far as to speculate that a coup might be in the works and that Putin is being misled by his officials. There's no truth whatsoever to this speculation, but propagating it seems to serve the purpose of raising doubts about the government's unity. That's intended to prompt panic among the Russian population, as well as make Westerners think that the geostrategic opponent is on the verge of political collapse. I want to remind you guys, I don't do drugs. Can you imagine how many of these big streamers have to do Adderall and all these drugs to keep them energetic? Isn't that crazy? I don't do any drugs. I'm totally clean. I don't take amphetamines. Or any drugs. Russia's campaign in Ukraine is an existential struggle to ensure the integrity of national security. The ruble largely recovered. The second ongoing phase of Russia's operation in Ukraine proved that its military advance on Kiev was just a distraction this entire time. In order to improve the prospects of swiftly liberating the rest of the newly recognized Donbass republics from Kiev's yoke with minimal civilian casualties and collateral damage. Russia flipped the strategic tables on the West, which is why its opponents are ramping up their fake news. Yeah, I want to get to the part where, where they're debunking. The oil depot that Ukraine is denying attacking. That one. They can't allow the public to acknowledge the fact the same special operation that provoked Russia placed multiple unintended consequences that have accelerated the decline of the U.S. unipolar hegemony. The alternative reality is that these fake information warfare narratives create is essentially a coping mechanism for their targeted Western audience as well as a desperate last-ditch attempt to advance the U.S.'s doomed-to-fail regime chain plans in Russia. It's all being propagated from a position of weakness, not strength. Otherwise, America's perception managers wouldn't have to push such easily discredited narratives. Russia's deep state unity stands in stark contrast to that of the Western opponents, especially in the U.S., whose permanent bureaucracies are divided over an increasingly counterproductive consequences, the same sequence of fast-moving events that they have themselves provoked. The French spy chief reportedly lost his job Due to failing to foresee everything that unfolded in the past month. Like I said, every, anyone who's saying, like Adam something, all these fucking people who are like, Oh my god, we were predicting this was going to happen. U.S. intelligence, nobody knew this was going to fucking happen. When the U.S. was saying Russia's going to invade and our intelligence confirms that, they were doing so as a deterrent. They actually had no intelligence that Russia was going to invade. They were planning, in collaboration with Ukraine, an operation in eastern Ukraine. Uh, an invasion, a full-scale invasion. 
And they wanted to deter Russia from doing anything by constantly telling the public that Russia is about to invade. No such divisions have been witnessed within Russia's own deep state since its officials are united in purpose over their country's operation in Ukraine. This doesn't really provide any arguments because I think I have observed some disunity, at least in terms of optics. Peskov's statements oftentimes contradict statements that come elsewhere, right? So I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to think. I really don't know what to think uh, in regards to that. Now, let me get this. Give me a sec. Okay, this is from the United Nations. So guys, this is not um, misinformation because this is the United Nations official channel. Yep, this is the United Nations. This is the United Nations official channel. And here, this is the bombshell. Russia is dropping more documents relating to Metabiota, Black and Veatch, and the research facilities, and they're naming names, including Hunter Biden. None other than Hunter Biden. And this is on the United Nations official channel, checkmarked. So you know that this is, you know, this is the UN. This is what they're, so they're confident enough. Would Russia lie to the UN? They're confident enough that this is true, that they're offering all of their evidence and documents to the United Nations. So we're about to see, we're about to see shit get real. This shit is not a conspiracy theory anymore. It's something that's going to be investigated in official capacity by the United Nations. Good morning, everybody. It's the 1st of April, the International Fool's Day, but I will be speaking about serious things. Uh, as you know, in the course of special military operation in Ukraine, uh, the Russian Ministry of Defense discovered evidence that Ukrainian authorities, supported and directly sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense, were implementing dangerous projects and experiments as a part of military biological program. These activities had been carried out on the Ukrainian territory in the middle of Eastern Europe and in the close proximity to Russian borders for many years, posing a real threat to biological security of our country and the region. On the initiative of the Russian Federation, the UN Security Council discussed this issue twice, on March 11th and 18th. We have circulated documented evidence received by our Ministry of Defense as official documents of the Security Council and the General Assembly. Those are Russian letters dated March 11, 18, and 29. There will be a new letter uh, today. I recommend everyone to scrutinize these materials. Those are the copies of original documents, contracts, communications between the Ukrainian side and the Pentagon with authentic signatures, project documentation, etc. Chat keeps suggesting you put an infrared globe on the canvas on r slash place. What are you talk what are you talking about? What does that even fucking mean? You act like I understand what that means and I don't. What the fuck does that even mean? Etc. For all this time, we have been seeking clarification. I don't know what that's supposed to fucking mean. I literally don't know what that's supposed to even fucking mean. I don't know what that means. 
I am literally at a loss. Like, what does that even mean? Education from the U.S. side on the true nature of its bioactivity in Ukraine and explanations with regard to the above-mentioned documents. In particular, we ask to clarify why the U.S. Department of State keeps insisting that the U.S. operates no laboratories in Ukraine, while there is a documented proof of Pentagon directly managing these labs with its subcontractors implementing projects. How about you put it? Don't ask me to do it, you do it. I don't know what the fuck that means. Deadly bioagents. The key question is why has the Pentagon been so deeply involved in biological projects on Ukraine, contracting the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, if, as the US delegation claims, all these activities are exclusively peaceful? We have received no answers so far. The US, as well as other Western delegations, have been totally dismissive. They refuse to provide any comment of, of the evidence that has been revealed, labeling it as Russian disinformation. However, documents speak for themselves, and evidence received by our Minister of Defense keeps piling up, and it is getting more and more specific. In particular, on March 31, our Ministry of Defense disclosed a list of individuals directly involved from the U.S. side in the military biological activities on the territory of Ukraine. Let me drop you a few names as an example. Robert Pope, then director of the Joint Threat Reduction Program, who came up with the idea to establish a central depository of especially dangerous pathogens in Kyiv. He had been actively engaged in the communication with the Ukrainian health minister, Ulyana Suprun, thanking her for the admission of the American experts to the Ukrainian labs. This fact, the U.S. side continues to deny. Joan Wintrell, the head of the DTRA office in Kyiv, that directly supervised projects to study especially dangerous pathogens, including anthrax, Congo Crimean fever, leptospirosis, etc. Lance Lippincott, the head of the Ukrainian branch of the Black and Witch, which is the Pentagon contractor company. Its work was brought into question even by the Ukrainian special services, which raised concerns about the threat of deterioration of the epidemic situation in Ukraine. All right, I'm on that. I'm on the r slash place. I looked it up, and I, I don't know how to. I don't know how it works. As a result of the experiments with especially dangerous infections, I, I exited out. I'm watching this now. Was carried out by the Black and Veach. Others include David Mastra, who is closely associated with another Pentagon contractor, Metabiota. Mary. Hey, Metabiota. Weren't we talking about that? Gatieri. Vice President of Metabiota and, as it was revealed, a confidant to Hunter Biden, which is confirmed. It's naming Hunter Biden at the UN. You think this is a conspiracy theory? Well, we'll let the UN decide. By their correspondence. Scott Thornton, who supervised the modernization of biolabs and advised local staff as part of the DTRA projects in Ukraine. Our Ministry of Defense has also re received extremely alarming evidence that the Ukrainian side attempted to get an access to technical means of delivery of bioweapons. The Ukrainian company Motorsic, requested by Kar Makina, the Turkish manufacturer of unmanned aerial vehicles by Raktar, if it is possible to equip this UAV with systems and mechanisms for spraying aerosols with a capacity exceeding 20 liters. This is, uh, there is a copy of the letter. The flight range of the UAV is up to 300 kilometers. If equipped with the containers with biological substances such as UAV, uh, such, a, such a UAV would pose a real threat of large scale use of bio aerosols on the territory of the Russian Federation. Uh, this, is, this is a document, I, you will see it among the documents that we dis will distribute. We also have evidence that projects carried out by the Pentagon on the territory of Ukraine put health and even life of volunteers, Ukrainian citizens, at risks. The, the documentation for the project UP8 prescribed that the, as I quote, minor incidents with volunteers must be reported to the US Bioethics Committee 72 hours after the incident and serious ones, including the deaths of the subjects, within 24 hours. End of quote. In other words, it allows for a lethal outcome 
through research program for this project officially, though research program for this project officially suggested only a standard blood testing procedure. What kind of blood testing it was in reality if it could lead to the death of volunteers? We are also analyzing the evidence of the This sounds really incriminating. This sounds very, very incriminating. Direct engagement of the US political establishment in funding of the military biological activities in Ukraine, providing funds for the Pentagon contractors Black and Veatch and Metabiota. The published communication shows that the goals were far from scientific. For example, the vice president of Metabiota, in one of her letters, I can show you a copy, noted that its activities were aimed at ensuring, I quote, cultural and economic independence of Ukraine from Russia. What does, yeah, what does that have to do with science? What does it have to fucking do with science and research? End of quote. Which is, to say the least, quite an unusual goal for a, for a biotech company. A clip from Hunter Biden's, in no way Nadia is in Hunter Biden's laptop. Bro, don't lie. She's not in it, bro. Shut the... F bro, you... It's like... You're very... You're on thin ice. You're literally on thin ice. You're literally on thin ice. Military biological activities of the US on the territory of Ukraine are a violation of the Biological Weapons Convention. Such activities brings up biological threats of global scale, which represent... Which respect no border and can lead... Uh, up to a new pandemics. Appreciate you, Kakrunia. Kakrunia. Appreciate you, brother. We're just trying to report the truth, you know? We're being lied to. The media's lying to us. All these uh, liberal streamers are lying to the public about what's going on, and we're just trying to spread the truth. which can surpass COVID-19 pandemic. We see it as our duty to keep you updated on this file, to shed the light on those, on those looming threats. As I said, we plan to distribute a new portion of documents obtained by Ministry of Defense as Security Council and General Assembly document. I would also like to announce that to keep you better informed, uh, we are going to host an informal ARIA formula meeting of the Security uh, Council on, the, on 10 a.m. NYT time on April the 6th to discuss... Well, this is the UN, okay? This is the United Nations with a check mark, okay? So I'm pretty sure this is allowed. A broad topic on YouTube. ...of the threats to international peace and security emanating from military biological activities in the regions across the globe. So the scope will be a little bit wider than Ukraine. This meeting will be open to media and broadcasted. It will be briefed by the prominent independent experts on bioweapons. We invite everyone to come on board and listen to the first hand. So this is April 6th. On April 6th, they're inviting everyone to come and look at what Russia found. And they're going to forward all the evidence. Information. I promise you will get much more food for thought. I would also like to inform you that the threat of provocations with chemical weapons is still very high. And we recently distributed a new letter to the Security Council where we are drawing attention to the new information provided by the Ministry of Defense, uh, notably that the Ukrainian nationalists continue to plot chemical provocations and uh, they are up to blow up railway tanks containing up to 800 tons of chlorine, which are stationed in Kochetok. Voidburn, why wouldn't I be live? It's literally only been four hours settlement 15 kilometers northwest of Chiguev city in Kharkov region. So it could uh, lead to a very big uh, catastrophe. Uh, yeah, it's only been four hours. Contamination uh, of... The date is April 6th. Up to eight days of... A, of a but when this is going to happen? ...area with a radius of eight kilometers. Uh, and uh, these uh, people intend to present this heinous act as a result of shelling of, of these tanks... Yeah, Kakrune, but I agree, but, you know, we don't like Biden, you know?
We don't like Biden. We think Biden is the the one who did, started all this. You know, this wouldn't have happened under Trump. This is the Democrats and Biden's fault. By the Russian air forces or artillery. So this is absolutely inconceivable, inconceivable with the tasks of our, uh, of our operation in Ukraine. And we would like to re reiterate that the use of any chemical agents, including chlorine, against civilian population deserves condemnation in the strongest possible terms. So we are giving a heads up to the UN and hope that it will be taken into consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe one question, and I, I need to go to, to the Security Council chamber. Ambassador, thanks for that. If, if you're worried about biological weapons in Ukraine, doesn't it make sense to pull back your troops and not be fighting near them? <laughs> What a stupid question. <laughs> what a stupid... Look at his face. Look at his face. Imagine how he feels. What a stupid fucking question. She doesn't even deny it. She just threatens him. <laughs> She's like, okay, you caught us. We are having biological weapons. But shouldn't you get the fuck out then? Because we're going to use them. Like, she basically just threatened him. Like, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> Yeah, can't you just leave them be? <laughs> number one. And number two, can you comment on the attack on the... Uh... You know, I don't know why Westerners are still, like, in denial about Russia being in Ukraine in the sense of, like, they're like, they're like, Putin, just get out of Ukraine. It's like, you need to, like, accept the reality that Russia's in Ukraine. You need to accept that reality. Okay. You need to just accept it. You're not going to convince Russia to get out of Ukraine. It's so weird. It's so weird how they're, they're so deranged. Like, they, they haven't even... They still are living in denial. They're living in denial. They still, like, won't accept what's happened. They're still trying to be like, No, Russia, you're... They're, like, making it seem like Russia is just subjectively in the wrong. There's no objective factors. There's no eight years of war in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass. It all started because Russia just went to Ukraine. All right, Russia, just leave. Oil tanks in Russia, what impact is that going to have on, on okay, going Okay, very talks? briefly. Uh, first of all, the, the fact that we uh, started our military operation uh, already led to the closure of these 20 bio laboratories, which represent uh, a real threat to the Russian Federation. You guys remember when, like, we, when Pepe, that Pepe guy, reported very early on that Russia's precision surgical strikes, very early on in the special operation, were aimed at destroying these labs, and that's literally what they were. And secondly, uh, the attacks on, on the Russian territory, they just uh, reflect the real intention of the Ukrainian side and the real intention for any peace talks and... Uh... Since Ukraine is denying being responsible for those attacks, who's responsible? Someone wants to keep this conflict going. Gestures that could lead to certain openings. Thank you very much. Somebody wants to keep this conflict going. Okay, there's another video I want to show you before we get into the Caleb on Jimmy Dore thing. Right now in a... Oh my god, dude, shut the fuck up. What a loud voice. America, dangerous seeds are being planted that could turn into something much more dangerous than the current war between Russia and Ukraine. On March 3rd, 2022, a mere seven days after Russia's formal Still loud. invasion of Ukraine began, former United States Secretary of State Michael Pompeo traveled to Taiwan where he was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to deliver a keynote speech. He sent this message to the world. It is my view that the U.S. government should immediately take necessary and long overdue steps to do the right and obvious thing, that is to offer the Republic of China 
Taiwan, America's diplomatic recognition as a free and sovereign country. Okay, if you do that, there's going to be war. Just letting you know. If you do that, China's going in. So good luck. If you want to end any semblance of Taiwanese independence, then do this. If you do this, China's just going to occupy Taiwan. Simple. Is the United States and China destined for a war over Taiwan? Well, here's how I see things unfolding. Everyone, before we get started, I want to take a moment and thank Webull for sponsoring today's video. Webull is a trade to get started and let's jump into today's important video. Over the past few months, I've been reading a plethora of American political articles that all have one thing in common. They are all written with the goal of conditioning American citizens to believe the best option for a safer world is for the United States government to increase the defense budget, increase our military presence in Asia, and intimidate the Chinese government. Take for example this article from Foreign Policy entitled, Washington Must Prepare for War with Both Russia and China. Georgetown University professor Matthew Kroenig states, Hey, if you go to war with Russia and China, you're going to get fucked. Sorry. First, Washington should increase defense spending. No, I we're all going to die. If we, <laughs> we... We're literally all dead. We're all going to die. As an American citizen, I have to be honest. Out of all the things that our government can spend money on, I really think that defense spending should really not see an increase right now. Over the last couple of years, we have been ravaged by a pandemic that has caused tens of millions of Americans to economically suffer. In addition, homelessness and crime is through the roof. There is a tremendous amount of domestic issues inside America that these funds would better be focused on. Unfortunately, the military-industrial complex controls how our federal budget is actually constructed each year, and the author goes on to state, The United States can afford to outspend Russia and China at the same time. The United States could go as far as to double defense spending. That's not going to do shit for you. Holy fuck. That's not just... I, when have toys won wars? in historically decisive moments. When, when, has simp when has technology beaten human willpower in historically revolutionary moments? Currently just 2.8% of GDP and still remain below its Cold War average, close to 7% of GDP. Once the money has been allocated for this increase in defense spending, the author then shares his brilliant idea on how to actually intimidate China. Washington could always take a page from its Cold War playbook and rely more heavily on nuclear weapons to offset the local conventional advantages of its rivals. The United States could rely on threatening non-strategic nuclear strikes to deter and as a This is fucking insanity. The U.S. should threaten to use nukes? These people are fucking crazy. These fucking experts who are ruling us are insane. This is like when Adam something said, Well, a nuclear war isn't that bad. It won't end all life on Earth. What? What do you mean? Are you... Wait, what? This is insane! Can anyone wake up? Does anyone want to wake up and just say, fuck this? Because this is literally crazy. These fucking Redditors are holding us all hostage. These fucking Redditors are holding us all hostage. We're all being, your grandma's being held hostage. These Redditors are holding your grandma hostage. Free her. Holy shit. A oh, nuclear war isn't that bad. What? Last resort, thwart a Chinese amphibious invasion of Taiwan. So just to review the strategy here, we're going to first double the defense budget, and then we're going to potentially use non-strategic nuclear strikes to intimidate China. As crazy as that sounds, probably the most shocking part of this article comes in the last sentence. There are risks associated with nuclear deterrence. Um, yeah, there's substantial risk to getting involved in a nuclear war with another nuclear country. 
let me give you the biggest risk, the potential for the end of all humanity as we know it. But if you're an American like me who worries about the potential for a nuclear war, don't worry, the author gives us a great assurance as to why this is actually a safe policy. But nuclear weapons have played a foundational role in US defense strategy for three quarters of a century and will likely continue to do so for decades to come. I mean, did he actually read this article before he sent it to publication? Is this really what you're advocating to do with China? This is absolutely crazy to me. It's what does that do? What the fuck? These people are literally crazy. What is going on? In this foreign affairs article entitled The Growing Danger of U.S. Ambiguity on Taiwan, authors Richard Haas and David Sachs make the argument for the American government to shift away from strategic ambiguity to strategic clarity. This essentially means that the American government should formally announce Please. America's commitment to Infra 8 S-U-N-G-O-R-I-L-L-A Infra 8 Tanky Infra 8 S- Okay, fuck. Militarily defend Taiwan Yo, what up Slicker, how you doing man? In the event China were to invade. The authors argue that the US government needs to send a stern message to China's government to deter them from invading Taiwan. And once again, this would be the best policy to keep peace in the Asia Pacific region. To give you a different perspective of how America sometimes misunderstands China, I want to share with you a short clip from Yuan Yuan Ang, an associate professor of political science at the University of Michigan and author of the book, How China Escaped the Poverty Trap. The U.S. tends to forget or not realize that its antagonistic actions and rhetoric are one of the biggest sources of support for autocratic and leftist forces in China. The U.S. doesn't come anywhere close to appreciating this mm. fact that whenever China is in a situation... Autocrat isn't it crazy how the left in China is so different? Of they say autocratic and leftist. Tense rivalry with the U.S. Because they're not cucked. Damn. That creates an environment where the pragmatists and the moderates are drowned out and the loud nationalists get to dominate the conversation based in China. Now, the U.S. and China have spent most of the past five years in a state of intense rivalry. And there is one thing that is very important for all Americans and mostly American politicians to understand. The more aggressive the United States is to China, the more aggressive China will be to the United States. If the United States were to follow the advice of Michael Pompeo and formally declare Taiwan a sovereign country, this would immediately put the United States and China on a solid pathway to war. To do so would not be in the best interest of all Taiwanese people, Chinese people, and quite frankly, everybody on this planet. Now, Michael Pompeo has made it very clear what his intentions are for Taiwan, but why don't we take a perspective to listen to the actual people that live in Taiwan. In this survey from the National Chengchi University, it states that only 6% of Taiwanese want independence as soon as possible. The option in the survey with the highest response was maintain status quo and decide at a later date. And even those who want to move towards independence. Notice how this category doubled from 12.8% in 2018 to 25.1% in 2021. Even this group wanted to at least maintain the status quo for the time being. The majority of Taiwanese feel the best option for them at the present is to maintain the status quo. Is this a war that the United States really wants to get into? And for what? Is this just Michael Pompeo making bold statements for political gains? Let's not forget that he could potentially be a front runner for the Republican Party in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. In this report from Nikkei Asia on March 5th, it was reported the U.S. Indo-Pacific... Yeah, see, Mike Pompeo is this fat fuck, and he's starting to, like, uh, lose a lot of weight because he wants to be president. You guys didn't know. He's like a fat ass who lost all this weight. He used to be this big elephantine, big elephant looking motherfucker, big elephantine, you know, British uh, aristocrat looking, East India Company looking motherfucker, big ass Pompeo, Pompus, Pompeo, you know what I'm saying? Elephantine Pompeo, um, 
And now he lost a lot of weight because he wants to run for presidency. Pomp in circumstance. The command. Yeah, only in, yeah, I know. In America, it matters because Americans are like, I like him because he's not ugly. I'll vote for him. Well, actually, I don't think so. You know, America voted for Trump. I don't need to give a fuck anymore. But they used to. Because Americans used to know the whole system's rigged. So they're like, ah, fuck it. I'll just vote for the skinnier guy. Fuck it. And has submitted a proposal to Congress for a funding of $27.4 billion over the next six years to build a network of precision strike missiles along the first island chain which of course includes the island of Taiwan. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, there are trends underway that could make the current Ukraine crisis look tame in comparison. I don't believe this type of foreign policy is in the best interest of America, and quite frankly, we need to learn more from history to avoid future mistakes. Let me take you back to the current Russia and Ukraine situation so I can tie this entire situation together and help you see the full picture. Did you know that when Vladimir Putin formally came to power in 2000, one of the first things he asked America was for Russia to formally join NATO? Of course, Russia was denied entry. Interesting enough, one year later, September 11th happened, and this is one of the key principles inside the NATO doctrine, that if one NATO member is attacked, all NATO members are attacked. And once again, Vladimir Putin called America and spoke to President George Bush and said, we want to help you fight terrorism. Let us know how we can support America. Once again, America decided to reject Vladimir Putin. Moving on, Vladimir Putin then went to the European Union and asked if Russia could formally join the EU. Of course, he was also rejected by the EU. They said that your country's too big. You're not part of Europe. And once again, Russia and Vladimir Putin was rejected. Not only was Vladimir Putin and Russia rejected multiple times, they were also given a guarantee that NATO would not expand one inch further east. But of course, we know how that situation unfolded is that NATO expanded east five times, going directly against the Russian border. The United States could have done a lot more for Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union, but it chose to treat Russia as an inferior country and one that didn't deserve the respect from America. This is why some scholars actually believe Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine is the result of a US government's missteps in foreign policy. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm 100% against the war in Ukraine and call for an immediate ceasefire. I don't support what Putin has done, but I also recognize that the US has played a role in escalating the situation. And this is my biggest fear when it comes to Taiwan. In my opinion, there is no need for China to militarily invade Taiwan. Unlike Ukraine, which has been a sovereign nation recognized by the UN for over 30 years, Taiwan has always been officially recognized as part of China. This is a policy that the United States has stood by for the past 50 years yeah, and actually Pompeo. has been the cornerstone of the US and China relations. Pompeo wants to change that. The goal of today's video was to highlight the need for smarter foreign policies. When you have a Georgetown professor advocating that we need to double the defense budget and then use nuclear warheads to threaten China, to be honest, that article is absolutely appalling and anybody that reads it should absolutely be alarmed. And this is what I really want. I want more Americans to be more aware of what a lot of our politicians and a lot of these people are actually advocating. We do not want to get into a nuclear conflict with any country, whether it be Russia or China, and we have to really think carefully about how we are going to be moving forward in this world. America and China may never be close friends, but there is one thing we must learn not to be, and that's enemies. Everybody, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube. If this is your first video of mine that you're watching, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. And once again, I want to give a huge thank you to Weeble. That was a good video. I think I'll subscribe. I like this. You know what? This is the guy who can defeat Adam something. This is, the, this is our champion against Adam something. This is the guy who will defeat Adam something. This guy will defeat Adam something. He's the hero we needed. This is his channel, Cyrus Jansen. This is, our an, this is the antidote to Adam something. Cyrus Jansen. The Adam something antidote. The anti-Adam something. This is our antidote. This is our antidote.
All right, let's watch Caleb Maupin on Jimmy Dore. We've all been waiting for it. You all want to be to cover this since time immemorable. And we're going to do it. I'm here with Caleb Maupin. He's a widely acclaimed speaker, writer, journalist, and political analyst. He has traveled extensively in the Middle East and Latin America. He was involved with the Occupy Wall Street movement from its early planning stages and has been involved in many struggles for social justice. He is an outspoken advocate of international friendship and cooperation, as well as a 21st century socialism. Please welcome Caleb Maupin. Thanks for being here, Caleb. Sure. Um, now I want to talk about your book here. Here's your book, Bread Tube, Bread Tube Serves Imperialism. Explain. Now I don't know most of the people in this book. I I, I thought I was going to know everybody. I don't know plat, plat, any of them. Uh, so tell tell people. Jimmy's what, got the book. What was your meeting with Jimmy like? Um, <laughs> it's actually crazy. I met him. How many times did I meet Jimmy? Twice. Yeah, I met him twice. One time was at his show backstage. And then the other time is we went out to dinner with him. Uh, huh, let me think. Can I tell you guys something funny? First of all, he, he was the same. He was, he's like the same. He's great in person. But I'll be honest, when we were out at dinner, I was really distracted the whole time. I was very distracted the whole time because there was this one woman who was working there who I like fell in love with. Like I was so distracted and the whole time I was just like scoping out like how I'm going to approach her and shit. And like I was only thinking about her the whole time because holy shit, let me tell you. No, she did, uh, trust me, you would un if you saw her, you would understand why. She was about, like, she was kind of tall, like, a, like one inch, she was one inch shorter than me, so like five, seven-ish. She was, uh, she had black curly hair. So she was either Latina, or she was mixed, or she was both, both. She had black eyes, and she was thick as hell. She was, like, thick, but, like, very thick, but eloquently, I guess. And I was like, oh, fuck. Because that, that's, believe it or not, that's kind of rare in L.A. Because it was natural, you know, so it's rare in L.A. Um, Yeah, respectfully thick. That's exactly it. Eloquently very thick, you know. So I was really, that's like I fell in love at first sight. Um, no, not Kim K vibes, more like, like longer legs. I can't explain it, but still very thick. Like, like, wow, like, holy fuck. Like I was, you know, did I say anything? Well, when, when I, when we got up to leave, she had left. I guess she was either taking a break or her shift was over, but she was gone. Because I was waiting till we left to like shoot my shot or whatever. She was gone. But LA is like a fever dream because like I used to do that a lot in LA. Like LA, I was fucking, I was a fucking coomer, man. I'm sorry. Like that shit was just. It's crazy because I don't go out here. Here, I don't go out. I don't even leave the fucking apartment. I don't even use Tinder, you know? So LA, oh my God, bro. I was a fucking monster. Like, holy shit. I had no chill in LA. Zero chill at all. What bread tube is, and then tell, tell people how they serve imperialism. Well... You know, I got kind of sucked in. Uh, I was asked to debate somebody, and so somebody wanted to debate me, me about socialism. So I debated this character, Destiny Stephen Bunnell, and we had quite a... <laughs> He's talking about Destiny. 
Yeah, all I'll say about LA before we uh I'm gonna rewind that a little bit. But all I'll say about LA before is that I really like Latinas. Like I really, really like them. I really, really like Latinas. I really like them a lot. Like a lot. Like a lot. Okay somebody and so somebody wanted to debate me about socialism so i debated this character destiny stephen banal and we had quite an interesting debate about socialism uh, and uh it was very odd and so then from there uh i was sucked into this internet subculture this internet universe that presents itself as left wing that presents itself as i like latinas more than middle eastern women i like them more than middle eastern women because with Latinas, you meet them once and we're going on a roller coaster. Middle Eastern women, you meet them once and you have to talk to them for 40 days, then meet their parents, then meet their grandparents, then meet their cousins, then meet their everyone else. And, and then 60 days later, you can hold their hand. And they're very emotionally taxing and it's... To me, because I'm also a Middle Easterner, it's very emotionally taxing, very much always drama going on, always bullshit. And I'm not saying there's no drama with Latinas, there is. It's just quicker, funner, more fun, quicker, and, you know, intoxication, exactly. As, as socialist or Marxist or anarchist, but it is really just a way to rile up young people who associate with progressive causes, anti-racism, workers' rights, and get them supporting uh, the U.S. political establishment against the right wing. Um, and so the more I kind of observed this internet subculture, and these people are getting hundreds of thousands, millions of views, they're being promoted by the New Yorker magazine, and they're speaking in the name of Marxism and socialism and leftism, but the essence of what they say is that the United States and U.S. imperialism, you know, they are the good guys. Uh, against, you know, these authoritarian regimes uh, around the world. They're spreading freedom. Uh, they say that socialism is just an employee stock ownership program. They don't press question the rule of profits. They just want to kind of experiment with worker cooperatives, basically. Um, and uh, it's pretty clear that they are getting propped up by one wing of the establishment. Now, in the book, I go into the evidence of that. Uh, but then we have further evidence of that, thanks to the work of Max Blumenthal and the Gray Zone. We now know that one of these voices, Abigail Thorne, was directly being subsidized by the British government. Did you guys hear about that? That was a direct connection. Uh, by foundations tied to USAID and to uh, the British royal family and such. So, you know, what I what I said in the book based on estimates, right, based on some of the people in the background advising them that I heard about and other things uh, has now been pretty well confirmed. These folks are basically some kind of psyop uh, to get uh, get young people that have socialistic or anti-imperialist instincts and get them to serve the empire. So you're saying and you're saying there's evidence to back this up, that there are YouTubers in the political lefty space, and a lot of them. You're saying a lot, not just, but a lot of them, and, you, and they're called BreadTube. And you're saying that those people are somehow being co-opted by the intelligence communities to push an agenda? Sure. I mean, I received uh, quite a bit of information about who was advising them. There's a, an individual who's tied to military psychiatrists who appeared on CNN uh, calling for mass deprogramming of the country. At That's Steve Hassan. Steve Hassan. January 6th. You know what's crazy? His name is Steve Hassan. It's a combination of Destiny and Piker. The, 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 the psychologist deprogrammer guy who like all these bread tubers know his literal literally her name his name is Steve Hassan and it's literally a combination of destiny and piker which is the most cursed combination if destiny and hassan fused that would be the biggest monstrosity in the world it would be the most horrific disgusting thing in the world Next. Um, and there are other other things that point to some kind of covert support, uh, the mainstream media highlighting some of these people and celebrating them. Um, and then their foreign policy stances uh, could come directly from CNN. 
Um, and then we have that great report that was done by the gray zone. <laughs> all points. You guys know Piker isn't the son's last name, right? It's like a made, isn't it a made up last name? What does Piker mean? It's a made up last name, right? It's his name. No, it's not. Is it actually his last name? Someone told me it's not his last name and he just made it up. Oh. He told someone told me he like made it up. Is it actually? Let me look this up, bro. I mean <laughs> Let me look this up. I'm pretty sure it's not. It is. I've never heard of a Turkish last name called Piker. I didn't know that was his last name. To this, but the thing is, there's a precedent for this, right? We often talk about the Congress for Cultural Freedom program, which was in the 1950s. Uh, the CIA realized uh, that uh, that basically, if they wanted to hurt the left and hurt Marxists, uh, one way to do it was to start funding certain voices. And you had the CIA set up Partisan Review magazine. Uh, you had the CIA basically launch a whole program to subsidize left-wing voices that were anti-communist, that were against the Soviet Union, that were against China. And there's a long history of covert manipulation of left-wing voices, you know, kind of presenting left-wing voices uh, that are, in a way, acceptable to the establishment. And it was actually Irving Kristol, uh, who was the director of the Congress for Cultural Freedom Program for the CIA. He eventually became the, you know, considered the ideological father of neoconservatism. Um, but a lot of big names that one associates with the left, uh, you know, like Mary McCarthy, Hannah Arendt, Susan Sontag, uh, they got their start with this CIA funded publication. So there's a precedent for this kind of behavior. And so, during the Cold War, this was done. Yes. So this isn't new. In fact, um, so this isn't new that the CIA, the intelligence communities, that they co-op media and they fund media directly a lot of times and to push an an agenda, a, a, a imperialistic, uh, hegemonic agenda. This is like the most epic crossover ever. Uh, that's this is not new. This isn't a crazy conspiracy theory. This has been documented. Uh, well, the Church Committee, uh, that was in the seventies, and what? Can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it became revealed in the 1970s with the church committee that was during the presidency of Jimmy Carter. You had a congressional committee that investigated the FBI and CIA, and they revealed a number of things, including Project Mockingbird, which was you know the CIA's wing that was handling the media, as well as Project MK Ultra, which was about promoting uh, hallucinogens and drugs uh, on college campuses and into left wing and radical spaces. And that there was all kinds of foul play. And again, this is documented. It's There's documented. This whole yeah, I mean, this, these are facts. These are historical right. facts. There are mainstream media articles about it. There are whole academic books that have been published. Yes. I remember when I met Jimmy, I was so cursed. Like, I had a chain on. I had rings and shit. I was like... I was in a very cursed state of mind. And I was like a fucking dog. Holy fuck. Like I said, at that restaurant we were at, the whole time I couldn't even focus or pay attention. I was literally a monster. ...about this kind of thing. And it's so sad that they've cultivated this atmosphere where if anyone says anything like this, they just go, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, that's a conspiracy. No, these are things that are acknowledged from the history. Um, and based on these historical precedents of manipulating activists, manipulating left-wing voices, based on some of the people associated with BreadTube, and now based on that smoking gun we got from Brayzone, it's pretty clear what BreadTube is. It's an attempt to control the narrative and make sure uh, that people who are interested in socialism and workers' rights and opposing the police state, uh, that they you know, follow a certain foreign policy agenda. And there's nothing particularly scandalous about this. We should, we should almost expect this. Just charm hole, like, bro, just because you have a gift next to your name doesn't mean you can just say shit like that. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's disgusting. It's literally disgusting. Kind of behavior.
uh, at the end of the day, right? I mean, this is how they work. They, they try to craft discourse in their own way. What's interesting is that the primary activities of the bread tube crowd seem to be about getting left wing voices to kind of, you know, participate in this partisan red. Dude is literally out here honcho posting. Literally out here honcho posting. State versus blue state fight. And you, Jimmy, have been targeted ridiculously because, oh, my goodness, you interviewed somebody from the Bugaloo Boys. Oh, my gosh. Right. This 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 cancel culture never talked to any Trump supporter, never talked to anyone on the right. This is a big part of this because they don't want an actual movement of the people from below uh, where you have people with different perspectives and different ideologies, different religious backgrounds. They don't want that. What they want is an army of foot soldiers to do the work of Joe Biden and protect Joe Biden from the Republicans. And if you can just, you know, cancel anyone who's deemed, quote unquote, right wing, uh, you can you can isolate people and make them loyal foot soldiers of, of one section of the ruling class. Uh, so who. So they 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 had did come back. So that's the biggest thing that they seem to want to shut down uh, is if uh, beating the establishment and the intelligence community, if somebody from the left and the right figure out that they have common enemies that they can work together against, that's what they have to demonize like they did to me when I interviewed that Boogaloo boy, which, by the way, p people still don't realize it. Boogaloo boy. 100% different than Proud Boys. <laughs> Boogaloo Boys are the antidote to Proud Boys. Boogaloo Boys are anti-imperialism, anti-cop, anti-Trump, anti-racist, and pro-LGBTQ and pro-Black Lives Matter. That's what Boogaloo Boys are. But the bread tube people wanted to manipulate that and distort that into Boogaloo Boys are right-wing racist, just like Trump and Proud Boys and Nazis. That's what they wanted people to think, and it's the exact opposite. Um, and that's why I trended on Twitter Based. for three days straight one time Based was because Jimmy they have all their bots and everything coming out to try to create a false narrative that uh, Jimmy Dore's working with uh, Nazis instead of Jimmy Dore is reaching out to working class libertarians who share a lot of the same goals of people on the progressive left. And we share a common enemy. And so they had to try to distort. It's not. It, it, it works on some people. It that certainly isn't does isn't helpful, but it's to a point where when people attack me that way, it actually does help me now because now they see the people who are doing those attacks and we've explained to them who they are, except I didn't know who these people are. Who are the people who are on bread tube? You, you mentioned someone named Destiny. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Damn, that must suck. Who else? Who else? But these are popular people. Sure. Well, this Destiny character, who I guess you know, he's considered he's kind of the kingmaker of BreadTube, if not part of BreadTube himself, right? Really? Uh, he's a guy from the the kingmaker of BreadTube. <laughs> he literally is. You know what Destiny is? <laughs> He's literally the swamp. He's the fungal rot at the bottom of the swamp. I used to think Destiny was like a menace to the establishment. But he's just the rat king. He's just like the fungal swamp monster. And he, he, he conflicts with the rest of BreadTube. But he's still at the bottom of that swamp as the king. He's like with the, all the rats. You know what I'm saying? He's the king of the sewers. Destiny is the sewer king of bread tube. Nebraska, uh, who worked at a carpet cleaning company, but figured out a way to start playing video games on the internet full time. Uh, and he became kind of famous for playing a video game on the internet. And that was his, that was his life. And then randomly around the time Trump got elected, he suddenly started debating right wingers. And he was kind of a right winger himself. He was a libertarian or something. But then he started debating right wingers and mainstream media outlets were like heralding him as oh, this famous Internet troll is going to. That's literally I didn't even think of that. You want to think about the origin of destiny? It's this. The reason he shills for the establishment is because the establishment gave him everything. They're the ones who have, like, they wrote all these puff piece articles like, praising him. Like, 
Ever since then, he's ne he's always like, ah, the media is never wrong. His whole ego is attached to them. You know? You don't think Destiny's a fucking uh, petty person? He is. He's petty. He's ego-driven, just like most human beings. And that's his loyalty to the status quo. Debate the right wing and debate debate Trump supporters. And he was getting a lot of play that way. And it seemed like that was his new his new gig, was debating folks. Uh, there's this character... Uh, I almost don't want to say his name, but I think we know him as, as Vosh, uh, you know, and this character, I mean, his father's a well-connected Hollywood, Hollywood for person, uh, you know, he, he's from Beverly Hills, um, and he right now is just a cheerleader for the Azov Battalion and the far-right extremist forces in Ukraine. Uh, he's gone, gone all the way into just, I mean, he wants this war to keep going, he wants Russians to die, he wants, he wants a big war between the United States and Russia, and he's made that clear, and Again, uh, if you watch his streams, what's what's kind of amusing is that he's not very familiar with left wing politics at all. I mean, he 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 has handed lists of quotations, you know, from Lenin, from Marx, and he'll read them off as if that means you should vote for Joe Biden. Uh, and it, it's really kind of pathetic to watch. Uh, but one thing that that I find to be uh, interesting about all of this, you know, you talk about about the importance of people coming together. You know, Mumia Abu Jamal. That was an important cause in the 90s. This was a black liberation fighter who was facing the death penalty. And the reason that Mumia Abu-Jamal is still alive, he didn't get the death penalty, he's still in prison. But the reason that the state of Pennsylvania couldn't execute this former Black Panther was because a lot of people of different political views came together to stand against his execution. Uh, you had True. You had the far left, communists, anarchists, others. You also had black nationalists, people with the Nation of Islam. True. Minister Farrakhan. You also had Catholic priests and nuns. The True. The Pope stood against the execution of Mumia. You had Mennonites and True. Amish people and True. In 1995, it was hundreds of thousands of people piled into Philadelphia with one demand: don't execute Mumia Abu Jamal. And that's why Mumia, this black revolutionary journalist, wasn't executed because people came together, overcame their differences. But nowadays, uh, it seems like uh, instead of doing that, uh, we're supposed to engage in this kind of politics where the left talks to their crowd and riles them up and tries to purify them of any deviant thoughts within their own ranks. The right talks to their own crowd and does this and everyone gets poorer and the country polarizes politically and austerity and war march ahead. And this is a, a setup for disaster. This isn't how serious political organizing works. Uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And that is the biggest threat to them is the populist left, populist right, realizing we have a common enemy, realizing that we can organize together uh, against the establishment, against the oligarchy to stop war. Uh, to stop police brutality, to stop racism, we could do. There's a lot of things to to help. Uh, also, uh, to help our economy and get a living wage for people. Uh, they that that's the last thing they want. They're now happy that the gas prices are so high, so people will be forced to go back to poor paying jobs. Um, that's the that's the world we're living in. And you're telling me that uh, those people, those pretend. So it seems to me that the bread tube or the people who say they're progressives or lefties on YouTube. But they're actually just shills for the Democratic Party. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. When I've looked. Yeah, it's like that simple. Like, yep. A little into it. It's every time they're like, well, you have to vote for Joe Biden. You have to vote for Hillary Clinton. You have to vote for the squad. You have to vote for Democrats. And Democrats are better than Republicans. And they come up with crazy reasons why the Democrats are better than the Republicans. Meanwhile, more and more people fall into poverty. More and more people go bankrupt. More and more people can't get health care. And we have more and more billions and trillions of dollars for uh, imperialism and wars. Why they keep telling you to keep voting for them. I mean, and everybody, everybody does that from uh, Kyle Kalinske to crystal ball to right i mean did, you know, of course the young turks would you consider those people bread too because they're do it seems like they're doing the same thing telling everybody to keep voting democrat and that's so you can go off and have your marxist theories and you can you can criticize democrats but you have to at the end of the day vote for them and you can't ever entertain a third party that's what i see that comes out of bread too would you consider that Sure. Well, it's the same script. They're reading from the same script. There's no question about it. I think BreadTube is more specifically aimed at teenagers, people in their early 20s. That's literally the difference. Kyle Kalinske, TYT is for older crowds. BreadTube is for the Zoomers. It's the only, or the millennials. That's the only difference.
twenties. Oh, okay. And it's got more of a, a grunge vibe. You know, it's people sitting in their basements streaming. It's it's you know documentaries uh, and and you know things that are more alternative looking. It's got that more punk rock alternative aesthetic. But it's the same script that Young Turks is using. The same script that Kyle Kalinske is using. Same narrative. What I find interesting is, you know, again, they've gone after you because, oh, my gosh, you interviewed a bugaloo boy. Right. But none of this cancel culture ever applies to Joe Biden. You <laughs> ever. Know, you ain't black author of the crime <laughs> bill. I mean, I mean, but none. Of, I mean, you just just have to vote for him because he built because, the, because, he built the cages. Those kids are in. He's the one who made it so you can't get rid of your medical debt or your student debt and bankrupt. He made it. He's the he's been the screwer of the American people. He's been the why are uh most of our prisons uh, uh, filled up with. You got banned from the young. What did you get banned from? What's T.Y.? What is T.Y.? T.Y.T.? Uh, black and brown people because Joe Biden. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they'll, you'll never get they'll never cancel him, but they'll try to cancel me when I speak about Joe Biden in an honest way and tell people to stop voting for him. Sure. And it, the crazy thing is, you know, there's the, the narrative that they have is so shallow. It's basically there's this group of bad people called fascists and yes. they're under every rock yes. and they're hiding on behind every tree. Yes. Every Trump supporter is a Nazi. Yes. Every conservative is a Nazi. And they're not even understanding that fascism, there is a scientific Marxist understanding of it. Read R. Palm Dutt, read uh, Georgie Dimitrov, right? There is an understanding of where fascism comes from, and it flows from the breakdown of capitalism. It's a system, you know, when you have the capitalist system with profits in command, you inevitably have economic breakdowns and, you know, great leaps in technology lead to greater poverty. And as there's greater poverty in society, one faction of the ruling class wants to lock down society drive wages down and reduce living standards uh, and degrow, which is another big bread tube theme, degrowth. Uh, they want to degrow. All right. Yeah, there's the there's the honcho comment of the day. There's the honcho comment of the day. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I think he was asking for it. In order to try and stabilize the capitalist there you economy. Go. There's a scientific Marxist understanding of what fascism actually is. But in their minds, fascism is a question of good people versus bad yes. people. And if we just drive these bad people uh, out, uh, then everything will be fine. Well, no, it's not a question of good people versus bad people. It's a problem rooted in the system, the fundamental flaws of the capitalist system. So they think that people like they'll say Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are fascists, but guys like Joe Biden, Kamala Harris are good people. As if they serve as if they don't serve the exact same people and have the almost the exact same agenda except with tweaks on the on the margins i mean sure well they're all you have to understand Go ahead. trump says naughty words he yeah. said naughty words and it's yeah. all about words with these people it's all about words it's all about aesthetics it's all about imagery nothing about concrete actual analysis joe biden can set up the crime bill joe biden can be driving the wages of workers down none of that matters it's all just this question of aesthetics and and they are they're triggered by what they think of as authoritarianism, right? If anything reeks of, you know, a strong government getting things done, it scares them, whether it's coming from the right or the left. And again, go back to the Congress for Cultural Freedom and Susan Sontag and her redefinition of fascism, where fascism becomes groups of people working together for a common aim uh, when they're trying to equate the Soviet Union with Nazi Germany. Uh, there is a long precedent for these kind of distortions of, of left wing politics. And BreadTube is a continuation of that, I maintain. Well, and, and again, I don't. So I Caleb's such a great guy. He's such a great guy, you know. I really like meeting him in person, especially the first time. I met him and I met uh, the group he was with. Very professional, just, you know, these are real people, guys. These are real people, you know. These are real people. They, they know what they're doing. Very businesslike and professional and shit. You know, everyone was wearing suits. He was a really good guy. I, I the reason why I'm not aware of who Bread Tube is because I'm not in the demo that they're going after, right? Because they're going after younger people. Like almost everyone who's in politics is weird somehow, right? Almost everyone in politics is they got like some weird quirk that just makes them weird. 
Caleb's a totally normal guy. Like, he's a completely, like, normal, good person, you know? Almost every political person's got some, like, weird quirk. Where they're, like, a little too judgy or they're too personal or whatever. You know? Thank you. Alright, whose username is TYT Armenian Genocide, okay? Whose username is TYT Armenian Genocide? Sure. And and are they are they mostly on Twitch or YouTube or both? Anonymous gifted a sub to TYT underscore Arme like what is that? Twitch, uh, YouTube, they're all across social media platforms. They're very widely promoted. What about that um, Hassan Piker? So, so when I see, so that Hassan Piker, Jenk Uger's nephew. Sure. Uh, super talent. Uh, he, um... This reminds me of the guy who made a he Twitch... He had an article. This reminds me of the guy whose Twitch name was $3 million house West Hollywood. $3 million house WeHo. That was his name. A positive article. Might even be in the chat. Article written about him in like the Business Insider or some magazine like that. I don't know which one it was. But the reason I know this is because every time I logged into Twitter for a week straight, it was promoting that article. How does that happen? Uh, exactly. And if you look at how BreadTube started on Reddit, it was largely there was a lot of money being handed out in order to encourage people to debunk. Yeah, they've been here the ideas of the right wing, right? The, the right wing was gaining on the internet. There were a lot of right wing YouTube channels, etc. And a lot of money started showing up in people's Patreons and a lot of uh, algorithmic support was being provided for people to debunk the right wing. And that's good. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff on the right wing, conspiracy theories and, and notions that we should privatize everything and roll back all government regulations. So it's not inherently bad. But at the end of the day, they're also targeting people on the left, like you, like me, um, who dare actually challenge the system. And they're trying to cultivate the left to just be foot soldiers for, for some the, of the most powerful the, capitalists out there. For the um, Democratic you know, Party. Like, yeah, Jeff Bezos, the, the Walton Bill, family Bill at Walmart. Yeah, I mean, that's that's who they ultimately want leftism to serve. And no, I mean, the goal is to get a society where the banks and the factories and the industries and the centers of economic power are organized to serve public good and not the profits of a few, a rationally organized economy. That's the goal. The goal is to overturn this system of, of imperialism and build a society where the needs of people come first. Uh, and you're not going to solve that with worker cooperative schemes. And you're not going to solve that by voting for Joe Biden. Ultimately, it's a question of getting working people to realize their own economic interests. And they have a word for that, right? If you want to raise the minimum wage or if you want Medicare for all, you're a class reductionist. That's their term. What? You know? Immediately, they scream class reduction. What does that mean? Never raise I don't know. I don't know what it means. But uh, if, if you if you want to fight for economic justice, you're a bad person. You're a class reductionist. And they, they have all kinds of lists of, of, of accusatory names they throw at people. So and one of them is is if you believe in economic justice, if you raise economic issues, you don't focus on the culture war. You're a class reductionist. That is such that's, that's well, what I what I enjoy telling people is that when you hear people who say they're on the left in the United States and they say things like, uh, oh, we have to organize along class lines, right? We have to organize. You'll, I'll, you'll even hear the knuckleheads at TYT say this thing. We have to organize along class lines. They have no idea what that means. And if they do, they're just blatantly lying because they do not mean what organizing along class lines means is that you organized with people in the same class, meaning whatever political stripe they come from, meaning if they're a libertarian or a social. No. They have to be liberals. They have to be leftists. And they have to agree with Disney's decision to strike down the Parental Rights Act. Socialist or a Republican or a uh, boogaloo boy or a socialist or a communist. All those people have to come together. That's called. So it's just like when you organize in a union. I've been in unions my whole life. The way you don't organize a union is you don't go to the shop floor and go, who hears a boogaloo boy? You're out. Who hears a proud boy?
Wait, you're out. Who's here as a libertarian gun nut? You're out. Who here is a Trump voter? You're out. Okay, who's left? Now we're going to organize against the man with you people. That's not how organizing works. It's only powerful when you get people who totally disagree with each other to agree on something. And that's when change really happens. Like when we had the Medicare for All March this summer, people were complaining that there's some right wingers on stage. Uh, that's because Medicare for All means Medicare for all. And that's when you can actually pressure government when you have people from all different stripes of politics combined and converging on one idea. That's how you make something happen, which is why the Black Panthers teamed up with the KKK in Las Vegas to get their welfare checks back. That's why that's when that's why they killed Fred Hampton. Why did they kill Fred Hampton? Because he was organizing black people? No, because Fred Hampton was organizing southern racist whites with black people in Chicago and they were realizing they had more in common than they had separate and different and that's when they killed Fred Hampton. So that's the thing that they can't have and that's what people who say we have to organize along class lines when you hear somebody at the Young Turks say we have to organize, they don't mean it for a second. They hate people who are in the different political party than they are and in the same yeah. class. They hate those people and in fact their business model is uh, built on clickbait, uh, hating those people. So I, I'll just, would you like to comment on that? Well, sure. And, you know, the biggest cure in U.S. history for racism has always been the picket line. When black workers and white workers see they have a common economic interest, this breaks down the divisions. It was the CIO and the, you know, in their effort to, to spread unions, uh, it was that that broke down the racial divisions. When the Communist Party in the 1930s was going... Unironically, the source of racism is universalism. If we all respected the fact we come from different cultures, there wouldn't be racist disrespect. You'd just be like, all right, that's not my culture. I come from a different culture. That, that's called respectful di distance. Called respectful distance. Called respectful distance. Going into the auto plants and the steel mills, often uh, they would break down historical divisions among workers and build multiracial unions. Uh, you hear about in the South when the sharecroppers were organizing, how you know William Z. Foster and Gus Hall would go to a town and, and give a speech, and how and how the, the the white workers would rip up their Ku Klux Klan cards and say, "My enemy isn't the black people. My enemy is the the, the plantation owners and the capitalists and the big bankers." You know that is how you overcome. Racism is getting people to see they have something in common, bringing people together. Uh, it's through those kinds of struggles that you can break down inequality and that people can see that they have more in common. Um, and by, by creating artificial divisions ahead of time and discouraging economic struggle, you're setting the stage for the opposite. You're setting the stage. Thank you, Morlock. For basically whipsawing the population. You know, there's an old device they call the whipsaw, right? And it's like a, it's like a two-man saw. And when one guy's pushing, the other guy's pulling. And when one guy's pulling, the other guy's pushing. That's kind of what they're doing right now in the United States. Uh, they want one section of the population to think that they can only gain at the expense of another section of the population. And then they go to the other section and say, oh, you can only gain at the expense of the other one. And we've right. got working people all throughout the United States pushing and pulling on each other in a culture war. Uh, and we're all getting poorer. And their agenda of creating a low wage police state marches ahead. And we got to have class solidarity. We got to go against it. Fred Hampton is a great example of that kind of work. A uh, low wage police state. That is exactly what they're pushing for. Uh, well, anyway, great work on this. Bread tube serves imperialism, examining the new brand of Internet pseudo socialism by Caleb Maupin. It's available at uh, Amazon and all the all the places where you can buy. But is it do you have a website? Sure. Um, you know, um, I'm I'm at CalebMoppin.com, but you can also check out I work with a think tank called the Center for Political Innovation. We're at CPIUSA.org. Based. Uh, we're trying to bring people together, try to formulate an economic program to rescue the United States from the crisis we're facing. CPIUSA.org. It's the Center for Political Innovation. Caleb Maupin has been our guest. Uh, great work and look forward to talking to you more. Thanks for coming on the show. And I and I apologize again for the delay. Thanks for being a good sport. Sure thing. Based. Based.
based Ugh, yeah. <sighs> you guys, uh... Oh, come on, guys. I'll take your DNA. I'll take your DNA anytime. I'm sweating. I'll get there. Hey. What? Oh, wait, this video. This is what I wanted to show you guys. What if I told you there is a robot that controls more wealth than any country on earth? A robot so powerful that in the last 10 years, it has quietly created the biggest company in the world. This is the story of a robot called Aladdin. It's Wall Street's best kept secret, and it's gobbling up every asset class across every industry. Aladdin now controls $21 trillion of our global economy. To put that in perspective, that's more than the $20 trillion GDP of the US or the $15 trillion GDP of- I didn't know BlackRock was based on AI. I did not fucking know that. The entire European Union. The New Statesman wrote, the total physical cash of all 7 billion people and every company, bank, vault, wallet, and piggy bank in the world is around $5 trillion. Aladdin has grown into a system responsible for more than four times the value of all the money in the world. This one robot directs the actions of the US Federal Reserve, almost every major bank and investment fund on Wall Street, and over 17,000 traders. It controls half of all ETFs, 17% of the bond market, 10% of the global stock market, Bruh, what the fuck? and carries out a quarter of a million trades every day and billions of forecasts every week. Year after year, it hoovers up a robot named Aladdin. Trillions of data points on every market, every company, every asset, and now even each of us. What we buy, sell, and say so that it knows what to buy and what to sell far better than any human being. Every major bank, company, and investment fund has come to rely on Aladdin and its all-powerful AI and algorithms to beat the market. And if they didn't, they've collapsed and failed in Aladdin's wake. And you know what the craziest part of this story is? This robot is just getting started. So where did Aladdin come from? BlackRock is such like a dark name. BlackRock? So satanic. Come from and how did it get so powerful? Aladdin is the brainchild of Larry Fink, the founder of BlackRock, and its total dominance has made his company the biggest shadow bank in the world and the most powerful company on earth. The story you're about to hear is equally unbelievable and terrifying. In fact, you would think it was- Hassan's gonna have Madison Cawthorn? No way. Science fiction if it wasn't very real and happening today. This story starts in the 1980s, when Larry Fink was making millions pioneering mortgage-backed securities at Wall Street Bank First Boston. That's right, the same mortgage-backed securities that caused the 2008 global financial crisis 20 years later. But back in the 80s, he was in an epic Wall Street rivalry with Louis Ranieri at Salomon Brothers, made famous as the big swinging dick in Michael Lewis's book, Lies Poker. Back then, Larry was making millions for the bank and was on track to be First Boston's CEO. And then in 1986, an error in the back office computer models led to Larry making the wrong trades and he lost the company a hundred million dollars. The result was Larry leaving the bank as a failure with a stupid computer to blame. With check that experience, Hassan's Larry Twitter. had just one ambition to build a super smart. Hold on, let me check Hassan's Twitter. I'll check it. Hassan. Based. I think this is cool. I actually think this is productive. I think this is a productive development, you know? Maybe it'll teach Hassan to stop being so cringe. Madison Cawthorn on stream. I think that, that's, uh, I think that's kind of based. I think that's kind of based, you know? You know, I used to think that Hassan's people were like, or Hassan, they're just really big cancel culture, no dialogue with the other side of the aisle. If Hassan can have Madison Cawthorn on, I used to think that was like how Destiny was, you know? Destiny's not like that. It's like the tables are turning. Destiny's starting to be like this person who's like, we need government censorship and cracking down on this environment. And Hassan seems to be kind of more, you know, chill and lax. So it kind of seems like shit is changing, you know? I don't know. Robot. 
What do you guys think? That could pick out risk and opportunity in the market and do it better than any computer or human could do. In 1988, he launched a new startup, BlackRock, with a tiny coding team to give birth to this robot. Its name, Aladdin, which stands for Asset, Liability, and Debt Derivative Investment Network. In its first 10 years, Aladdin was fed information about every asset, price movement, and risk variable in the global bond market, Larry's specialty. And in 1999, when Aladdin turned 11, Aladdin was getting so intelligent at picking losers and winners that Larry began selling access to its data to other Wall Street firms. That same year, he took BlackRock public on the New York Stock Exchange. Straight after the IPO, the dot-com bus burst, pushing a wall of money from the stock market to bonds, which Aladdin had become the undisputed world champion in. Within years, the AI is buying rubles right now? No way. As BlackRock had become a trillion dollar company and as money started shifting back to shares, what did Larry do? He bought the asset management arm of Merrill Lynch, which was focused at shares. So the gift for Aladdin's 18th birthday, all the data points for the entire stock market and suddenly Aladdin had a new I don't care if Hassan represents the left badly. Fuck the left. They are bad. New playground, analyzing every stock trade and risk factor for every company on the stock market. As a result, today BlackRock, together with his two... You know what? Can I just say something? Can I just say something? I always thought this woman was so beautiful. Especially when she was younger, I would have wiped her up. What's her name? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? She is so fucking pretty. I swear to God. She's so pretty. Holy shit, when she was younger as well? Jesus. She kind of aged like fine wine. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like her when she's older. She's actually so pretty. Who does she look like? Oh, she looks like someone from my life. Holy fuck, she doesn't look like a celebrity. She looks like someone I know. Damn. She's actually so pretty, I swear to God. Stock trade and risk factor for every company on the stock market. As a result, today BlackRock, together with his two closest rivals, Vanguard and State Street, both of which also rely on Aladdin's mountain of knowledge, have become the biggest shareholders of over 40% of all public listed companies in America. 2008, the global financial crisis hits, and before Aladdin turns 21 years old, is caught on by every Wall Street bank and Timothy Geithner, the head of the Federal Reserve and the US Treasury. As soon as Lehman Brothers collapsed and the Wall Street meltdown began, the US government came calling to save the next collapsing bank, Bear Stearns. It was Aladdin who decided which assets to keep and which to leave in the $30 billion rescue package. And few people know it was a robot that saved America from disaster. With that first success, the Fed, US government, and now- Holy fuck, it's all AI? This is insane. This is how Wall Street and Silicon Valley merge together. AI, Wall Street, FinTech, it's all fucking merging together. Holy fuck. Even European and Japanese central banks began relying on Aladdin to make the calls on where the $2.5 trillion of new money they printed should go. The majority of it, bonds and funding to prop up the mortgage companies and banks. But when See, this AI is helping financial parasitism. Wait, aren't these exactly the assets that Aladdin and BlackRock already were invested in? Exactly. But growing protests of conflict of interest were drowned out by the noise of the- So this AI conveniently wanted all this money to go to mortgage banks and assets that BlackRock was already invested in. So this is actually fucking insane. BlackRock made an AI that's just going to make BlackRock- Rich as fuck. It predicts trends. The problem is, when you have monopolies like BlackRock, the trends are not chaotic. The, the, like, the trends are not actually fucking random. They're coming from the existing precedent, which is fucking insane. It's like a self-fulfilling... It's like a... It's like, 
it it's like a constantly growing self-fulfilling fucking prophecy for blackrock oh it's like tautological you know it's not based on any it's not based on like anything economically rational holy shit it's like a weird form of central planning for economic financial parasites printing presses, printing more money, as the assets controlled by Aladdin rapidly grew to $11 trillion by 2013. In the last decade, Aladdin has gone from the leader to the- Like, invest in this hedge fund. Why? Because the hedge fund is safe. Why is it safe? You get it? At some point, the snake's got to eat the tail. It's just based on precedent. Precedent begets precedent. Damn. Dominator of all financial markets. With BlackRock's Barclays acquisition, it got iShares, Barclays Exchange Traded Funds Units, or ETFs. And with that, Aladdin moved from dominator of bonds and equities to dominator of ETFs, just as all the biggest investors shifted from mutual funds to ETFs. The problem with machine learning in finance is this simple when it comes to investments. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. It's like a speculative bubble. Do... It doesn't actually account for the underlying econ cause for economic change. Sorry, for economic uh, realities. Like, invest in this because there's trends to invest in it. What the fuck? And that's when, in 2017, the fact that capitalist profit is becoming something pegged to AI is actually fucking insane. Everything changed. On Aladdin's 29th birthday, Larry launched a top secret project at BlackRock, codenamed Monarch. It led to the firing of his fund manager. The fact that it's that predictable means our economy is centrally planned and we don't even fucking live in capitalism anymore. ...and replacing their funds with Aladdin's funds. The robot was now eliminating humans from the equation altogether. And as a result, today over 70% of all trades on US stock markets are decided by robots, with Aladdin leading the way. These trades are completed from beginning to end without a human involved in high frequency trading far faster than a human can execute. Now, if this was just a story about a robot taking over the job of Wall Street traders, you might not be so concerned unless you're one of those traders. But in the last three years, as Aladdin hit $20 trillion in assets, incredibly, it has begun to consume and control at an even faster rate. First, in 2020, as Aladdin turned 32 years old, the US government and Federal Reserve again came calling as the pandemic hit. Aladdin was again the one to guide the nation in what was now $4 trillion of newly printed money. Where did the money go this time? Inexplicably, for the first time, the Fed began buying ETFs in 2020. Well, that's a little strange. And again, the cries of conflict of interest were drowned out by the money printing. And then Aladdin- Damn. Are you guys looking at this shit? 
Nobody talks about fucking BlackRock. We all talk about Amazon and fucking Elon Musk. Shit, nobody talks about Larry Fink of BlackRock. The fuck? Revealed its endgame. Recently, BlackRock acquired eFront, which collects data on the things that you and I own, including private equity and real estate. And since then, Aladdin has consumed eFront's data on the entire global real estate market. And yep, you guess what happened next. Over the last two years, BlackRock and other funds using Aladdin's data have begun buying up single family homes where they can afford to outbid the rest of us as they have unlimited financing at hyper low interest rates. The result is home prices rising by 20% over the last two years and pushing now even big players like Zillow out of the market. And here we see Aladdin's endgame to be the one hyper intelligent AI robot that not just controls Wall Street assets, but all assets, public and private. Now I'm not into conspiracy theories, but even a skeptic with eyes wide open can see the signs. We're already at a point where no one can compete without Aladdin. As CEOs and asset managers like Anthony Malloy are now saying, Aladdin is like oxygen. Without it, we wouldn't be able to function. And what about government regulation? Well, Joe Biden has appointed BlackRock executive Brian Deese as head of the National Economic Council, which basically means the oversight of Latin and BlackRock is now the responsibility of BlackRock. And Biden has also appointed BlackRock. The fuck? So this whole time we're being ruled by robots. Chief of Staff Wally Adiemo to be Assistant Secretary of the... Yeah, this is like Nick Land shit. This is Lovecraftian horror. This whole time, the whole Biden thing, it's what the fuck, bro? The Treasury, which means BlackRock is now the Treasury as well as the Treasury Advisor. And this story is far from over. The genie is out of the bottle. And Aladdin has already reached a tipping point where one robot controls more wealth than any person or country. But as Aladdin's AI capabilities continue to grow, and with its rate of control rising by another trillion to two trillion dollars in new assets every year, it looks inevitable that Wall Street's secret weapon could end up owning everything, and we end up owning nothing. So what do you think? Are you indifferent, surprised, angry, afraid, or have a different point of view? And if you found this interesting, if not a little alarming, before- Damn, wait a second. What did we just miss? Who is this? Just kidding. What's this tiger though? What is this tiger? Or have a- What is this tiger? There's something about the tiger that adds something to it. All right. There's something about a tiger that makes a seven go to a nine. You know, when you add a tiger, everything changes. Everything changes. This whole atmosphere is very interesting. Different point of view. And if you found this interesting, if not a little alarming, before you go, do subscribe so I can keep you updated with more news on the exploits and adventures of Aladdin. Bro, Will Smith let his wife get piped by another man. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm Satan. Sorry, Will, that's just how life is. It's a cruel world. It's a cruel
All right, guys, there's not going to be a stream tomorrow. I got to go visit my family. I will see you Sunday. I will see you Sunday. What did you guys think? You think I was going to stream for two more hours or something? I got to get to bed. What did you think? I think I'm streaming for another 10 hours. I got to go clean my beard and, you know... Go to a barber tomorrow. Wake up. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.